And we're live from the Ryman Auditorium in Nashville during the Country Music Week, CMA Week. And I've got Shane Talent. I just talent. Do I say it right? Talent. You said it correct. Because he's got talent. Well, that's still to be TBD. And he's with Country Now, as am I today. We are here repping Country Now with a twang. Right, first, is this your first ever twang out? This is the first time I've ever <laughs> experienced my twang out. Yes. Oh, so, so we say it's where high tech meets redneck, and we let it all twang out. And with us, we've got uh, Bethany Priest from Keene, Massachusetts. Not Massachusetts, New Hampshire, right? Yes, you were so close. Hi. I know, it's like all those states up there in the Northwest. And then uh, Danielle Bowers from Massachusetts, a photographer, blogger, writer. Say hi. Did you not have your coffee yet? It's I did one not. I know, uh, I'm behind. Hi, Shane. <laughs> hi, everybody. And then Stephanie Bear with Got Country. Hello. And a billboard winning program director, Tony Thomas. Thomas, Thomas. Yeah, there's hey there, Northwest. and I'm in the Northwest. Bethany's in the Northeast, and in, I'm in Seattle, and we have lots of coffee in Seattle if you need any coffees. I look like set. space with that backdrop. Yeah, that is pretty cool. Buzz Lightyear. <laughs> I love it. Ooh, I'm really excited to have you guys here today, and we are going to have a blast because we have a lot of awesome uh, country music acts lined up here to talk with you today, and um, Shane is... Tell us a little bit about Country Now real quick. Well, Country Now is the new exclusive to YouTube country channel. So we've got lots of original content. I'm the host of a show called Country Download, which is similar to the ESPN program Around the Horn, where I moderate um, other country music experts, and I kind of start a topic, and I let them kick it back and forth, and then I tell them to shut up because we have to move on to the next topic. Oh, right. So it's on a, it's on a timeline, um, so it's really fast-paced, oh, and awesome. we cover everything that's happening uh, current in country music, whether it's new artist spotlights, um, Taylor Swift slipped and fell off the stage. We, we just, you know, what she didn't, by the way, but <laughs> if she were to fall off the stage, we'd cover it. And then it's uh, every Friday. So it comes out every Friday, a uh, new episode, and we're really excited about it. And there's also a lot of other content on the channel. Laura Bell Bundy has a fashion show called OMC, and there's an animated show. Uh, Stokes Nielsen from The Lost Trailers has a show called Here and Now. Awesome. So there's, and there's new new stuff on the horizon as well. Excellent. And so we are going to get started with our first guest. We have the lax coming in. And uh, Shane, you want to let someone sit well, in your lap? Yeah, I'll, I'll get out of the Come way. Come on into my living room. I happen to I've live here. i the size of these guys. I'm not going to let them sit on my Honestly, lap. So I'll I, get out of the way, and I'll let you do your thing. I feel like I, I could just live here at the Ryman. It's awesome. Imagine, like, certain... Hi. How's everybody doing? Fancy microphone. I know, aren't they? <laughs> I think your city... Is your microphone right there? Welcome. So, having a fun week? Definitely so having a good one. You guys, the, the lax, I love you guys have had some big milestones this year. Yeah, yeah, we've, uh, we can't believe how YouTube's helped us out this year. I mean, 20 million views on one video. It's, it's insane, 20 million. That's, that's crazy. I feel like the, ain't nobody got time for that lady or something, you know? <laughs> How it blew up overnight. Well, weren't you bit like 50 to, 52 weeks on Billboard for the top album? Something. To, I mean, you had like an incredible year. Yeah, it was like 52 Definitely. straight weeks on the country top 100. That's hot. Yeah, that's, that's awesome. We um, still can't believe it. I know, I'm going to jump right into Ask Questions. Bethany. Hey, guys. So the first thing that I want to know is when you're performing and doing a show, what do you think is something you do that would surprise your typical country fan? Not if drink I, a beer. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that would definitely surprise and uh Maybe if I hit some Taylor Swift or Michael Jackson during the set or something like that, that would definitely throw them off pace. <laughs> Tony Thomas. So it, it's Uncle Snap and Rooster. Where where'd the names come from? Just some old, just some old nicknames that we we use around the house. I mean, that's just what our buddies call us. Our town's got one caution light, and you know, I, I still got some best friends I grew up with for. 25 years, I don't know their real names. They call them Bubba and Cletus and stuff, and that's Spot. not their names. But, you know, that's how we do it in the country. You know, a, a, a question. Oh, oh what, what would be a good nickname for Jessica? I'm sorry. <laughs> I want, I want a nickname. Fabulous. I don't have one. A good one, that is, that I know about. Barbie. Oh, I like you. <laughs> um, Stephanie. Um, where is the first place you've been? Uh, where were you when you first heard your song on the radio? 
It's actually near the house, near where we live at. So, I mean, it was a local station who, yeah. you know, they support us a lot. And there's a, we got a bunch of family and friends around home that, that really support us there. So, I don't know if Taylor Swift and people like that that hear their music on the radio are used to it by now, but we're still not used to it. Every time it comes on, we turn the radio up and say, hey, that's the, yeah, there it is. And uh, I want to ask, for someone, I know what it is, like hip hop, Southern rock, define that. Because people talk about it a lot, but tell what's hip hop, Southern rock? There's been so many names called for it. I've heard people call it country rap and shorten it for crap. So, <laughs> yeah, I mean, We've so, heard the alternative. Yeah. We, I mean, it's like, I don't know how to explain it. We, we can't sing that good, so that's why we started rapping in the first place. Right. And I don't think there's really a, a genre name set in stone to this. Yeah. Well, I think it's like country. You're telling a story. That's one thing about country and rap they have in common is telling a story. Right. And a right. I mean, and if you go back even to the old days of Johnny Cash, I've been everywhere, man. That's really a rap song. Absolutely. I still can't hit all the words of that song. No. trying to sing along with it. <laughs> well, uh, I think you guys, are we good on time? Uh, we have any questions coming in? Bethany. All right, I had another one. So Jess thought it would be fun if we had some like really random questions for you guys. So I want to know, you've got 60 seconds in the grocery store. You can grab three items. What do you grab? Ooh. A block of cheese. Bacon. And beer. Good. Well, if they had it in the grocery <laughs> store. <laughs> and, and then um, I'm going to wrap it up too with this. I'm asking everybody, George Strait, 60 and 60, 60 number ones by six. Uh, crazy Hunt, what's That's your awesome. favorite George Strait number one? Oh, Hans Amarillo by morning. Mine would have to be um, Run. Why? Just uh, that song just does something for me, the music. And I mean, of course, George Strait sings every song perfect. So. <laughs> But that's my favorite too. Yeah. Cool. Yeah. Why why Amarillo by Money? Uh it's like that's one of the first songs I ever heard by George Strait and kinda just grew up on it and that's that just does it for me too. It's so Texas mm -hmm. that song. So when we're wrapping up here, what would be something you would want people to leave this hangout or twang out knowing about y'all? Keep it redneck. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, we keep it redneck. I mean, whether you label us rap or country or hip hop or whatever. You know, we're going to keep it that way. Awesome. Thank you so much. Uh, coming nice. up next, I've got, I saw Jamie O'Neill, American Young, coming, I don't know, in the background. But uh, we're still talking. So you guys, are, um, I'm good friends with the, but your buddies, the Moonshine Bandits. Yeah. I used yeah. to work at Cat, or, well, I worked at Kiss Country in Fresno and then Cat Country in Modesto and yeah. the Los Banos crew. <laughs> so, I mean, I've known about you guys for a long time. Those are some... You some cool guys. We, Aren't they uh, fun? Texan we, Bird? We went awesome on a band. little West Coast tour, and they played everywhere we played like a week before us. And in every bar, they left a $20 bill signed by them and saying, you need to try this drink here. This just, is some, just some so, weird name yeah. shot. Did you guys get like a Moonshine uh, thing yet, too? Like a Moonshine uh, endorsement, like them? And no, them? no, we're working on it. Uh, that, okay, it I totally has got to be there yeah, soon. Yeah, definitely. And thank definitely. you so much, and uh, have a great time. Enjoy thank CMA Fest. Definitely. Thanks for having me. All right, thank you. Hey, can everybody still hear me? Are we still live on the interwebs? Yes. Oh, Here boy. So right yes. now, I see Jamie. I spy Jamie O'Neill. <laughs> hear me when I sound. Do I sound in stereo when I talk out of two, two of these? Also, if you want to ask us questions on Twitter, use pound CM chat on Google Plus, pound gone country, and we are checking the streams. Jamie, look at you. I'm going to stand up and give you a hug. Good to see you. Finally got you on one of these. Been trying for two years now. So, I know a lot about a lot a lot lot about Jamie, but I'm going to let you guys ask questions. Um, Bethany. All right. So you recently started your own record label. So congratulations on that. I want to know what was the biggest experience that you had as an artist that you took from that to bring to your record label that you really wanted to make sure that you did? Um, gosh, that's a really good question. I think um, being you know true to what the artists tell you they want to do and not trying to mold them into something else but to really take the best quality that they have that you think that the fans can relate to and, and build upon that. Awesome. And uh, 
Tony Thomas, a friend of yours from Seattle. I bet you remember Tony. this guy. Hello. I just to surprise you with that because I knew. <laughs> Yeah, Jamie has spent a lot of time in the Northwest, and maybe you just want to explain that real quick. Of uh, you had part of your childhood in the Northwest, and there's a real Seattle Northwest influence with your family and everything. What's up with that? Well, my grandparents um, lived and worked actually at the Biltmore um, Apartments in Seattle. So, my childhood, I, I remember really young, going to Seattle, and everybody else would complain about how rainy it was, and to me, the rain actually makes me really happy because. I think of my grandparents, and then my dad moved to Bellingham, Washington, which is a couple hours north of Seattle, and it's just the most beautiful area. I'm playing there on July 13th, and I can't wait to go back. We're going to spend like a week doing all the, the fun stuff, and um, so I do. I, I really have an affinity with the great Northwest, and um, my dad's over here actually too, and he says hi to Tony. Oh, thank you. Yeah, well, the, in the Northwest, we, we kind of feel like Jamie is a local artist. In, in a sense, so it's it's fantastic. I feel like that too. Congratulations Definitely. on your record label thing. That's awesome. Thanks, Tony. It's been great. Thank and you. Stephanie Bear got country. Jamie, you just recently had a birthday, so I want to say happy birthday. Oh, thank you. And what song of yours has had the greatest it's impact on your life? It's always fun celebrating those once you turn forty. <laughs> well, I'm sorry. What was your question? What song of yours has had the greatest impact on your life? <clears throat> well, I think Arizona, just because that was the first one, and that you know, it's like your first, you know, big big thing, so it really means a lot to me. But but as as far as emotionally goes, somebody's hero, just because so many moms relate to that song, and daughters would say, "I sa I danced with my mom at my wedding to your song, Somebody's Hero," or maybe an an older lady will say, "I just put my mom in a nursing home." So I think that song for me gets me every time when people tell me their stories personally. It's a Mother's Day anthem. Yeah, too. it's kind of a, a good tribute to moms out there. And we are, um, we're asking everybody today, and I know you're a songwriter, mm -hmm. um, we're asking everybody, George Strait just had 60 and 60, what is your 60 number one? No, that's amazing. Uh, what's your favorite George Strait song, number one? Oh my gosh. Um, there was one he had not too long ago, was it I Hate Everything? Uh, is that, uh, sometimes I, I get the time. Everything in there, but he actually likes it. Yeah, okay. yeah. That's I just I love the the ones that have kind of a little bit of sense of humor, and I just he's so such a great artist. And when you're you've written quite a few songs. Um, when you're writing, would you have like a particular? Do you start with the idea of the song or a melody, or do you start with the title? How do you normally, or do you have a pattern? It's a little bit different every time oh. you write. Sometimes if I'm in the car and I don't have the radio on, I'll come up with a melody first, and then I'll record it on my iPad, and um, and drive around and think, you know, what does this melody sound like? What is, you know, what could the song possibly be about? But other times, you know, you can see a bumper sticker or go to a movie and hear a line in a movie and say, hey, that would be a great first line for a song. And it kind of goes from there. So you, it's just different every time. And you, like, run home and you're like, i got to get this down. Yeah. Or it's, it's funny when you have the dream about writing this incredible song. And in your dream, this song is just so good. And so you wake up and you record the melody and the next day you listen to it. Eh, it wasn't as good as in my dream, you That's know. interesting. And then how do you decide what to record? Just oh, well, that's a whole other thing. Um, you know, when I was making my albums, it's kind of a, uh, a group effort, really. It's the producer and the label and and um, just, uh, you know, it, it, you have to be connected to the song and say, your gut tells you, I love this song and I feel like singing this song every night at my shows. Right, right. Because if you don't like it, then I just don't think you should record it, you know. And your daughter is kind of following in your footsteps. Is that scary or proud or how are you? I'm so proud of her. I mean, I think you should get behind your kids no matter what the passion is, you know. It might be jesting in the park. Um, it might be. <laughs> and that was for Shane right there. But he, um, It could be writing songs or, or singing or, you know, playing a sport or something. But she loves to do it, so. She's amazing. And uh, I know I'm monopolizing this. Let's come back over here to Bethany. Okay, so the other thing I want to know is how do you decide what artist is going to make a good fit with your record label? I mean, are there are certain things you factor in. Do you have like a gut feeling? What's the biggest thing for you? Well, with Rochelle, um, we were just really blown away with her um, spirit. I mean, when she performs live, you really believe her. And to me, it's the believability of an artist. Um, and to be able to, to carry it live, to be able to sing and bowl people over with your personality. You know, I think um, for us, that was kind of a no-brainer. And so we're kind of going with our label. It's just kind of an, one artist at a time. We're not signing 
um, a bunch of people and then kind of putting them in, you know, line together. We're really going one at a time and developing them as we go. When do we get new stuff from Jamie O'Neill? <laughs> I like the way you lent in for that. Like I it know. It was really <laughs> intense. You've never heard me ask that before. <laughs> Well, you know, I feel like one of those construction workers that's always working on somebody else's house. You know what I mean? Because our studio is always, we just have been working with Andy Griggs in the studio, and he's finishing up a new project. And um, we have so many different projects that we're working on outside of my music that, like, if you go to a construction worker's house, their house is probably not finished. And that's really where I'm that at. I have so sense. many songs. I really want to get some new music out there. I'm really in love with a lot of my new songs, and um, I really want to do that as soon as I can. We have one last question. Tony? Oh, or? you bet. Oh, yeah. Give me a sense of what's going on in Nashville right now. For those of us watching uh, here online who aren't in Nashville, it's kind of a regular day, but it's CMA Fan Fest time right now. What is that like for you as an artist to be in the middle of all this? It's great. I, I played the Bluebird on Tuesday night, and that was kind of the kickoff for me for this week. And um, just talking to people who are, who are coming in for the first time versus some people who have been here. This is their 19th year. Some people, and um, the great thing is the weather is cool. It's incredible. This is like the first fanfare CMA Fest I can remember that um, nobody's sweating and everybody's got smiles on their faces because they're calmly walking around instead of fanning themselves with a bikini fanfare. top on. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> Well, thank you so much, Jamie. I appreciate you coming over thank today. Thank you, I Jessica. Will see you I love you. We had to do one of Thanks, these. Thanks, guys. Thanks for the questions. Great to see you, Tony. Thanks. Great to see you. Thanks. And up next, I see we have Joel Krauss. Love you, Jamie. Hey, darling. Are you, are you performing anywhere else around here? And this cute guy coming up. How are you? You see, too, I get to get a hug? Yes. Nice course. shirt. Thank you. What's going on? Little Mick Jagger. Lock, I mean, I would say what's going on, but we're about to ask you all that. You got a lot going on. There's, there's a few. I, I know. We haven't really talked or hung it since Vegas, I think. Oh, yeah. Yeah. In Vegas. Vegas. There was that. Well, now, we have a story. We're, like, in Vegas. We were. We. It's kind of <laughs> one of those things. What happens there stays there, of course. Except with the internet. <laughs> Damn, the internet. Hey, so... um. Joel Krause, and I'm going to jump right in and let, I'm going to start this way, Tony Thomas from Seattle. We got a Seattle question first. Oh, very cool. Hey, Joel, I saw a thing online about you that said your personal motto is always be yourself. And besides just as a success idea, tell me about that in your music and about in country music, about being yourself. Yeah, definitely. I think, you know, that motto came after I had moved from uh, Massachusetts to uh, Nashville and, you know, working on my songwriting. And, you know, when you're in town here, I guess, you know, people can try and change your sound or change, you know, how you write and everything. But, you know, what's ultimately going to make you happy, especially as an artist, is when you're, you know, writing music that, that you want to write and that, you know, that represents yourself as an artist. So I guess that's where that came from when someone asked me that question. And at the end of the day, with country, really isn't that it. I think we all just want to hear whoever the artist is speak of their life or speak of a story that moves them. Well, of course. I mean, in country music, you know, the songs are so relatable that if you're not being yourself, you know, how are your fans going to relate to your song anyway? Absolutely. Um, Bethany? Oh, did I start with Tony to the right? And I'm looking at the little square. I'm going over to Bethany. All right. So you are a Massachusetts guy. Danielle and I are New Hampshire and Massachusetts. And All there's right. a lot of great places. Yeah, a lot of great places to see shows. When you were growing up, country music fan, where was your favorite place to go check out a show? You know, I moved uh, at such a young age that I never really saw too many country shows in Massachusetts. I actually saw them all in Nashville. I came to Nashville and visited uh, before I moved down here once when I was uh, 10 and 12. And we went to uh, the Grand Ole Opry. Uh, I think Carrie Underwood and Trace Atkins were on that night. Um, <clears throat> but then also when I was coming down here back and forth, uh, you know, I'd go and check out shows here. Uh, the, mostly the songwriters here at the listening room because uh, I wasn't really able to get, I wasn't old enough to get into any venues when I lived in Massachusetts. Uh, so, uh, Stephanie, Got Country. If you had to drive cross country and you could only listen to one album for the entire trip, what album would you bring with you? Ooh. Ooh. That's a, that's a tough one. I'm such a music geek. Um, I think I'd probably have to go with the Eagles 
first greatest hits album. One of the best studio albums of all time. Um, another question we're asking everybody today is George Strait, 60 and 60. That's that's number one. Pretty remarkable. What's your favorite George Strait number one? Uh, you know, um, I'm trying to think. Uh, I think the all my exes live in Texas. That is that that is, uh, yeah. that is but oh. that was that was number one for sure. Yeah, I'm pretty like, no. Oh, uh, that was probably like a number thirty out of sixty two. He has so many. It's hard to. <laughs> it's crazy. I should have had the list here. I like, know it's all. Yeah, I'm trying. I was just I had to. Wasn't expecting that. I'm I sorry. I know it's like saying, "What's your favorite color? If your favorite color is red, what's your favorite color of red?" It's yeah, red. <laughs> state um and a lot of stuff going on on tour right now with someone named taylor swift <laughs> holy cow how i saw your tweets you were in phoenix and you're driving down the road it's uh i mean Surreal? i didn't you know i didn't know what to expect doing any of the concerts and when we started in phoenix last week it was really just in a, a remarkable feeling uh you know just to step out you know as soon as the lights go down you know we're the first ones up and people are screaming and I've never experienced that before <laughs> so I was just taking it in and it reminded me it wasn't as good as when I played the Opry for the first time but it reminded me of something you know just as just as great as a feeling and she's real supportive I she's she's great to her opening acts I mean she really yeah. goes you know takes the next step to really help us it's awesome, awesome. Uh, Stephanie I mean I meant to say Bethany oh okay uh, let's see so hmm, how about who are you most excited to see play this week I who, who are you it. most excited to see this week oh you know what I actually leave tomorrow so I'm not gonna be able to see anyone I'm heading up to Minneapolis to uh, play a festival and I leave t early tomorrow morning so unfortunately I'm not going to be able to see anyone but if uh, I had a chance to see someone tonight I'd really love to check out Miranda Lambert I saw her live once but she just you know she kicks ass and your single right now is get, if you want some if you yeah. want some I was, I was thinking to get you some but if you want some and um, uh, you've got your EP will be coming out or yeah uh, my album comes out this summer this uh, late summer late summer uh, okay. after we get off the Taylor tour uh, and I can't wait you know I co-wrote all the songs and I think it's gonna be a really good example of uh, who I am as a songwriter and, an and all of the ripe old age of 20 right yeah I'm uh, 21 and eight days eight days oh, that's right eight okay days. and your birthday coming up or you yeah. just had it had birthday how exciting um and is this a rapper are we still we have time for one more question at Tony Tell us, if you can, briefly, because this is fascinating to me. Why do you carry around a picture of Gerald Ford? Uh, well, it's interesting. When I was uh, 15, I was at a church auction. Uh, my father's a pastor, and um, I didn't know how an auction worked, so I had $13. And so this autographed picture of Gerald Ford goes up for auction, and I'm, like, trying to impress a girl. And so they start the auction at $7, and immediately I say $13 because I have no idea what I'm doing. Anyway, I get this picture, and from that point on, I don't know, it was so random that I uh, kept it in my room, and then I took it on a, a tour when I went out on tour when I was uh, in high school, uh, took it to Nashville, and now when we get a bus, it'll go on there too. It's just, it's random, and I think it just reminds me of home now. That's awesome. I think that's a great story. That's one of my favorite things about you. <laughs> well, you, like had, you told me the Chevy Chase. I know, and told, so wish we could tell our Chevy Chase story. <laughs> but it's the best story in the world. It's pretty One day, I'll like, have to write a blog post about it, and then whenever I refer to the Chevy Chase story, I'll say, read the post. Please, uh, you should. Again, make sure you're following Joe Krause on Twitter and on Google+. And are you going to go back into the I am. chat? Right now, you can chat with Joel Krause on Google+, in our Google community. Danielle, if you'll tweet that link for me, that would be great. Uh, if you're on Twitter... CM Chat on Google yes. Plus. He's gone country. And don't forget, subscribe to the Country Now YouTube channel and follow this guy. I just Please. give you, I'm bossy. I told you all the stuff to do. <laughs> well, thank you guys <laughs> so, much. so much. Thank you for, for your questions. Us. Appreciate it. Thank, thank you. you. And up next, well, Shane Talent, thank you. Shane is going to join me. And we've got, who's waiting for us? Jared what? Are you next? No. -uh. Aw. Okay, yeah, no, well, you out. know, I couldn't see, yeah, Jared, you better get over here. I wasn't sure if he was just standing there, because, like, he wanted me to see how cute he is, and, uh, oh, my gosh, so, uh, Papa. Good to see you. Good to see you, too. Have a seat. There you go. You get to hold this. His seat's comfortable. I might not get out of the chair now. I know, right? So, big week for you. Huge week. You, too, huh? I just what? found out 
Yeah, well, he's got a baby due any day. Any I've, minute, right? Any I've, minute. <laughs> yeah, I've, mine's a little bit for mine, mine, as in twins on the way. Any mine personally, with my an wife. S on the end. Uh, yeah, crazy. Mine's a couple weeks. If mine comes out with an S on the end, we're gonna have to go out and buy another crib. We're gonna have to put it together. <laughs> or you, you better know fire what? your Sex? doctor. Or what if it's a boy or do girl? Do I know what sucks? It's a sex, boy or girl. <laughs> oh, <I just laughs> First question, that do you know, do you know, know what, what sex sucks? is? Yeah, I know a couple things. Um, <laughs> do you know what that is? It's a girl. It's a girl, okay. Yeah. So her name's going to be Jessica? You guys decided, right? Well, you should have hit us up a, a while back. So oh, what? It's uh, Georgia. Oh, that's good. My wife's from Macon, Georgia, that's and I'm from Noonan, Georgia, so it just seemed fitting. <laughs> so we got babies out of the way, but we also, you have a single coming up, uh, yeah. Last Train to Memphis, right? It's on the radio now. Boom. Yeah. yeah. You've not heard it? Yeah. You will. You will. No, I, heard, I heard it at, uh, in Las Vegas yeah. outside at a pool. I was there needed. And I liked your story. Remember you said the name dropper story? Will you tell that? Um, About it. Oops. That was a name you dropped. When you, you get a lot of that in Vegas. Name yes. droppers. Yeah. So. Good to hear the story. And I'll, I'll usually I'll stop the whole conversation and go, oh, yeah, you dropped something. Hold on. And I'll pick it up. And they're like, what? What did I drop? And they're looking around and said, you just dropped that name. You know. It's the best I, for it name droppers. Throws everybody off. It's oh, by great. the way, I have a gift. From, <gasps> oh, my God. Oh, okay. You I have, have to, to open those. I'm going to open it. And I'm going to actually throw it over to Tony Thomas. Hey, Jared. Hi from Seattle. Hey, buddy. How are you? I'm great. Tell me about you getting to this chair that you're in right now, the support team around you and your family. Uh, I was just at my daughter's school yesterday, and it's towards the end of the school year, and I heard some kids talking about their family's support of, of what they were doing in school. Tell me about how your family has supported you to get you where you are today. Well, my dad and my mom and dad have, have been a huge supporter of me my whole life, and um, music you know, I, I took a little break there and, and joined the Navy. I spent about four years in the Navy. But uh, when I got out, it, my family's always been there and been huge support. My dad bought me my first PA system, and uh, now it's kind of moved on to my wife, who's uh, amazing. Um, she's at home right now, probably with her feet propped up, and she should be running on a treadmill trying to get this thing going, <laughs> you know? Get you know, there, there's the, I, I just read that there are, f like, foot exercises, like pressure points on the feet that you can work that – She's so ready to have this baby. I think she'd, YouTube do, any, it. she'd do anything. YouTube Are you it. There's put that pressure on YouTube? points. There's yeah. no. There's video. We'll, we'll do it. You can push video, pressure yeah. points on your feet to trigger labor. Oh lord. There's I'm, all kinds of things. I'm scared but already. My family's been a huge support for me, and I'm very, very fortunate. Very. Fortunate. So how about someone who's had a, Bethany? Someone who's had a kid. Tell us something or ask a question. Oh, you want me to ask? I was going to say, do you want tips on how to have her go into labor? I didn't know that's what we were doing. Um, I want to know. Totally I was, different meaning to the word twang out. I know it really does. The show just took a turn. <laughs> For the worst, the better. So I was reading that you learned how to play guitar at a really early age. So what was the first song that you like really knew how to play that was like, okay, I have to play this for you? I might have to make up a story, but no. It was probably <laughs> the very first line, uh, th lick that I ever played on guitar was Heard It Through the Grapevine. And then I transcended over to Iron Man from Black Sabbath. Nice. <laughs> Yeah, it was easy. It was easy, so. Um, I can't play a chord. I, I couldn't either. I can't sing or anything. I only had, like, two strings on my guitar. I didn't know how to <laughs> restring it or tune it. And they were rusty. and So uh, it, it's a bit of a challenge for a kid first learning, you know, because they don't know how to tune a guitar. You know, they don't know how to string a guitar. What about those kids that just pick stuff up and start playing it, and it sounds amazing? Isn't that crazy? Well, you know, it's not that difficult. I, it, no. That's what happened with me, and, you know, <laughs> no, I'm kidding. <laughs> I have a question about CMA Fest. You obviously have a busy schedule while you're here, you know, doing stuff like this. You've got responsibilities with the fans, but if you get an hour free, what do you like to do uh, to kind of take it all in? Good, as far away from downtown as I possibly can. <laughs> <laughs> it's pretty congested down here, but it's amazing, you know, I was I was just telling uh, my manager today that we're very fortunate as country music artists to have fans like like this who will come down and just spend a whole week of their hard earned money and to come see country concerts and meet all us new ar artists and and they basically embrace us so we're very lucky very fortunate to have an event like this where um, we can actually you know meet our fans and or, and friends and and everybody gets together for a week and parties. It is amazing because no other genre does anything like this. Nope. I mean, really, it's so unique to country music. Um, I am going to Stephanie. 
Well, apparently it's worked because you have a beautiful wife and a new baby on the way. Give us your cheesiest pickup line that you know. <laughs> um, cheesiest pickup line. I'm not. I'm not really a pickup line guy. Um, good God, you put me on the spot there. Um, I don't know. I don't. I've never really. I like to laugh at pickup lines. I, I don't. I don't really have any pickup lines. I. I haven't had to pick up anybody in in quite a few years. So, um, I apologize for that. You got another question? You don't need a pickup line. He's a guitar. No, yeah. Yeah. It's called pick up the guitar. <laughs> exactly. Yeah, exactly. That's, that's that's my new one now. If I ever get asked that, that's my, oh, wait, that's my is, answer. Nux and look what I got on. Look, <laughs> Nuckle, not, look, I put it on. There you go. It's pretty. Yeah. She wanted to make it with little pink in it because you said she you made like this for me yeah she made this for you yesterday oh my god you have your wife make it oh that is yeah. I, we tell her i said thank yes. you from the bottom of my heart I'm shane I'm you don't get one my chopped liver she was out of boy beads <laughs> i forgot I, I that we talked about yeah, that at see? the acms so and she then she, i can't believe that you guys this is amazing you're going to be so jealous that's what uh, that's what bed rest will do and yeah, here she has we, yeah. we're getting ready to cut we have to start wrapping up we're asking everybody this question george Strait, 60 and 60 which your favorite George Strait number one song and uh, why? Um, the God, there's so many, even George Strait songs, even the B side back in the day were okay. amazing songs. But uh, I, I'd have to say probably Murder on Music Row. Oh. And uh, I, I just, I, th I thought it was a great, well written song, uh, Larry Cordell and Larry Shell and um, the songwriters. Um, and it's such a bold statement by, of course, Alan Jackson's involved in that too. And uh, it, Two country music, two of the best, some of the best country music singers in the world singing a, a great country song like that. Well, and, I uh, can bet that people are going to be telling stories about you and all your friends like that <laughs> in a few years. <laughs> I hope they're no. good ones. Yeah, oh, I can imagine. Yeah. Oh, um, are we okay? We're we're on for our next. I've got, I can see. I spy Josh Thompson. Thank you so much, Jen. Thank you. And, uh, good luck. I spy Maybe Josh Thompson Josh? too. You spy Josh Thompson. This could get ugly. I know. Wait. You didn't say you. I think you he said. I think I he said. I hope you don't smell, smell me. Um, thank you so thank much. You, Good man. luck. And Saturday, you guys are pretty sure you're gonna. Shane, you just gonna stay here with me? I, I don't mind. Whatever you want. Whatever. You I would love to have you, Shane. It's like we're in my living room, just hanging out, and or I happen to live at the Ryman. <laughs> Howdy. I feel like one of the Carter family members where they just kind of lived at the Ryman, right? Pretty much. Yeah, they were here so I, much. I, I was expecting this to be on stage. I don't know. That's next year. Well, we're working up to that next year. Awesome. How you been, man? <laughs> good to see you, you look good. You Thanks. Look good. You both look good. Thank you. I feel like I'm sitting between two shiny stars. Oh, my God. You just made my day. Uh -huh. I just got a cool compliment. Drinking? Yes. Thought so. From Josh Thompson. <laughs> All right. My day's over. I'm done. I haven't heard end on that note. I'm so excited. Um, you've done? Have you done one of these before? Um, Video chat. I, I think so. It's it's very intriguing to me. So I mean, I, I can see people there that are not in the Ryman right now, and I'm assuming that they are <laughs> going to speak with me. Is that crazy? I'm going to start with someone. I bet you you know Tony Thomas. I do know Tony. Uh, Tony, how are you, buddy? I'm good, Josh. How are you? I'm I'm fantastic. So with the CMA Fan Fest going on right now, it seems like it's so calm, look what we're looking at here. What has it been like the last 24 hours or so for you interacting with fans? And what's going on out there in Nashville, in downtown Nashville? I would, I would say that it's, it's like a five-year-old uh, on two gallons of Red Bull. <laughs> out here on the streets. I mean, it's it's. I mean, there's streets blocked off. I mean, it's it's as full as you can get Broadway, and and as full as I've seen it in the, you know the five or six years that I've actually been down here doing this. It's uh, it's a great thing because you know the the artists and you know they travel 300 days a year to uh, to all these people's hometowns and in these cities, and it seems like they're all here. And it's uh, you know, it it's a a beautiful thing that country music has it that makes these people travel awesome uh bethany priest keen hello New bethany hi how are you i'm good how are you good so you're a singer and a songwriter i want to know from you as a songwriter was there anyone that you worked with that you were a little bit intimidated by the first time you met them because you were a fan of their work um yeah 
I mean, every one of them, pretty much. I, I would say that uh, when I when I started having a little bit of success, I mean, there was always guys that, that had a lot of songs that were current on the radio that, that I was intimidated to write with, but um, I would say I was most intimidated when I when I actually got to start writing with some of my heroes like John Anderson and Bobby Bear and, and Whisper and Bill Anderson uh, to, to sit in a room with, with somebody who's basically the reason you picked up a guitar and, you know, was you playing when you drank your first beer and i mean it was you know pretty much a part of your whole life and and is a a hero to you i mean that was that was tough to sit in a room with those guys stephanie bear what is your favorite part about fan fest is it the performing or is it meeting all of your fans during signings and when are we going to get some new music from you well, it's funny you should ask. Um, uh, you know about the the fanfare, or the CMA Fest week. The, I think the thing that I like the most is is watching the the droves of people that uh, that are here, that are in this city where all the music happens. I mean, all the songs are written here. I mean, you know, all the artists for the most part live here, and and they're here. They they saved up their money, and and this is their vacation. And um, to see the riverfront and the streets just full, I mean, it's uh, it's good. I mean, it means country music is is alive and healthy, and it makes me feel good. Um, as far as new music for me, I have a new single coming out in uh, in August, and a new record to follow. The second record, the second second record, is almost done. So, uh, and it's uh, all going to be new releases on Show Dog Universal. So it's a whole new team, and uh, it's I'm excited about it. Awesome, big team. Um Going back over Tony Thomas, and if you want to ask questions, use pound CM chat on Twitter, pound Gone Country on Google Plus, and uh, don't forget to subscribe to the Country Now YouTube channel. Yeah, Josh, one of the fascinating things about your background is you took a uh, wilderness survival course, which is a uh, uh, like a polite way of putting it. You were basically like thrown in the woods at a young age at your own uh, volition and knew knew how to survive there, and you know a lot more about being out outside and being able to survive in the woods than most of us. What do you do for recreation when you go out in the woods? Because you can do and survive pretty much anything. What do you do for fun in the outdoors? For fun, I, I just, uh, the, for the most part, I get outside. It, it doesn't matter what it is. If I have time off, I mean, if it's just having a bonfire outside or, or camping, I mean, obviously I like the two to three day excursions where, where I'm out a little further from from civilization, but if it's, you know, kayaking or hunting or fishing or, or swimming or, uh, you know, running around with uh, my breech cloth on, I mean, you know, I try to get out there and do it. <laughs> There's a visual. <laughs> so if you ever had like a reality show about survival, what, what would your reality show be called? Mine would be, um, it would be me probably Music City Survival. <laughs> <laughs> that's, that's like a wild deep. There's so many layers to that. <laughs> that actually, uh oh, I hope nobody from reality world's like watching us. They're gonna steal your idea. I got one. Before you had a record deal and you were here, just kind of, you know, kicking it around. Do you have any CMA Fest stories, like like artists you you got a chance to see, or any like CMA Fest experiences before anyone was coming up and asking you for an autograph? Um, I. I would probably not any personal interactions like that, but I was here every year. I mean, I was I was down in here walking down the street and, and at the riverfront, and I honestly, I, I don't recall a thing about it because I was in every bar. I mean, I was having a good time. It really is a blast. I mean, it's nonstop music, and it's uh, – there's there's more beer in, the, in Nashville, Tennessee right now, I think, than, uh, than the whole state of Wisconsin. <laughs> right now for this one week so that's uh bold that's awesome i'm from wisconsin i could say that i know so that's totally bold that, right. that you're probably right and um we're asking everybody a question today george Strait, 60 number one hits six, 60 and 60 and what was your favorite george Strait number one and why man that's like picking your favorite tooth um <laughs> Go <laughs> well, you don't want to lose any of your teeth, you know. I mean, you, you love them all. Um, I would say, uh, you know, I would. It's it would probably change um, tomorrow, but I would say that uh, uh, 
Old Troubadour is my favorite, and and the reason that it is is because that was the first time that I saw um, the writing the writing side of the music industry work. Because I was writing, I had a, a publishing deal with uh, a guy who wrote it. His name is Monty Holmes, and I I heard the song the day he wrote it, and I heard the demo. And then I was there when they found out that George Strait cut it. And then I heard it on the radio. So, like, I heard, it, this was before I had cuts or anything. So I saw the whole thing come in a circle, and I was like, man, it really does happen. That's awesome. So that's always stuck out to me um, being kind of behind the scenes on that one. That's a cool story. Um, right now, what we're going to do after we're done jo with Josh is going to go to our Google Plus community, and you're going to chat with Haley from Google. Awesome. So you guys can keep talking to him in our Google Plus community. And I spy American Young sitting there waiting for us. And thank you so much yeah. for coming over. Thank here. you. I appreciate Okay, this is just lovely. I think roll camera. <laughs> roll camera. Roll that beautiful bean footage. <laughs> Sorry. And American yet yeah, wow, this is somebody <laughs> wait, take a picture, tweet it. No, it's a seven minute interview. We are we we're gonna very sexy. I'll Come switch here. places with no, you. No, wait a minute. And if here. I had a choice, I would have had her sit on my lap. Yeah, you know, I was gonna we're um, on a quest for equality today. Yeah. You know? We we go back. Me and Shane go back a long, long way. I could tell. Really. I could oh, tell y'all are close. <laughs> a long, long. Okay, so we are letting it all twang out today, live from the Ryman, where redneck meets high tech, and I love you guys. I am so excited to have okay. you guys here. This is exciting. Poor it's Shane. It's the first time we've gotten to sit down. Well, no, we've sat. We've done red carpet. It's always like, hello, hey, nice dress. Okay, like, yeah, isn't her dress pretty? Okay, well, love you guys. Bye. <laughs> now it's all. Hey, it's so, good to see you. You too. How this is, is our, fantastic? How this is, your, is exciting. First, this is our first CMA fest together. It is. And it is our very first. We we're very new to all of this. We've only really been together, known each other. Uh, musically well, we for had about our, a year. Our first anniversary on Tuesday night for yes. the whole that was at Lewis Palooza, the Tin Roof. It was fun. It was a year anniversary of our very first show. It was a very late night. Yeah. And you guys have a cool story about how you met. <laughs> where you were karaoke, uh, right? I was dancing and uh, on a yeah. stage. Yes. Um, with know. Shane. With dollar bills. With Shane. Yeah. Times were tough. A, I had. I'm a single mom. <laughs> and I, and I like those kind of things. So you went home broke. <laughs> yes. <laughs> Sorry. I kind of germed John at his um, number one party for okay. the woman like you, and I was like, dude, we should start a band because we sh because we should start a band. And, and I was like, okay. Yep. It was easy. Really? It was that easy? Yeah. It's like, okay. <laughs> well, I mean, the, uh, we, you know, I had gotten to a point where I was, you know, producing a lot and writing a lot and. You know, I kind of felt like, you know, the only way I was going to do the artist thing, again, if it was on, like, my own terms, because it really didn't work when I've done it in the past with other records and, and stuff. And he's a diva. I'm just right. kidding. <laughs> I may be a little diva. I may be a little diva. <laughs> but so we sat down and we sang together for the first time, and it was, it was wonderful. And I, I write for Paul Worley, so I went over to Paul, and I brought him these little guitar vocals. I, I was like, I have to do this, don't I? And he was like, yeah, you have to do this. So... Cool. So we got to make a record, me, Lee Bryce, and Justin Niebank producing, and uh, it was just phenomenal. Awesome. Uh, Tony Thomas. This is so crazy. That is crazy. Awesome. Hey there. Hi. Hey, Christy from Seattle. Hello. And John. Hello. So when the two of you first performed together, what happened? I mean, the very first time when it was stuff came out of your mouth and notes came out of guitars and fiddles. What was that moment like? Was it like, wow, or you had to work into it? No, it was so bizarre. We looked yeah. at each other, and 
it was kind of like this, oh my gosh, did you just hear that? Yeah, I just heard, I mean. It was bigger, <laughs> I, I think, you know, honestly, for me, it was bigger than the both of us, and we both knew it right away, and it was like, oh, wow, we should do this again. Yeah, <laughs> again and again. Yeah, it was neat. Fantastic. Um, I'm also now Danielle Bowers. I'm sure you have a question. I know you're friends with all these guys. <laughs> I wouldn't say friends. I'm right here. Hey. Hey, how's it going? Good, how, how are, are you? you? So tell me about um, Love is War. I'm dying to hear this song. Yeah, it's an incredible song. Um, Billy Montana, Kylie Sackley, and Jonathan Singleton, right? Yeah, I just, you know, the one thing in Nashville that I hadn't really ever done um, was go to pitch meetings, and, and, and I know that sounds weird, but I've, I've you know, I've done, done a couple as an artist, but um, I, I'm, a, such, I'm a writer, and so I just, that's kind of what I do, and John, when we started this project, he's like, you know, you, you really need to go out and listen to some of these songs and just see what you find. You never know. And that's what pitch meetings are. It's like when there's, we live in one of the only communities in the whole world uh, of just songwriters, you know, and I, I say just songwriters. I mean, that's, the songs are clearly the most important part of this whole business. So we live in a uh, town that is full of these amazing, wonderful songwriters that we have access to. Yeah. So what happens is we go to these pitch meetings with these publishers and with these songwriters, and they get to play us songs that they wrote and that they they publish, and we literally just go, yeah, we like that one. You yeah. Know? So it's a really wonderful situation. And you'll hear a couple every now and then that you're just like, oh well, three, two, there it's on the radio. I mean, it's it's crazy because you know that they're just going to be big hits. But Love Is War, I think, was the first song that the the girls played for me, and um, I just kind of I don't know. It's the same feeling as when John and I first sang together. I just had this really big um, piece that kind of, I honestly, I know this sounds really weird, but this has been such a spiritual thing. Like I was just listening and I felt like it was a really comfortable, like this is where you are, you, this is where you are supposed to be. And that song happened and, um, it was, again, it was the same experience when we, when we worked it up, um, it was just a very peaceful experience and, and it was this knowing that this is so much bigger than us. We have very little to do with this. We just show yeah. up and I don't know. Try not crazy. to mess it up. Yeah, on yeah. Tape. Awesome. Uh, Stephanie, if you guys were not in the music industry, what would you be doing with yourselves? Um, I mean, I'd be rodeoing full time. I did. I, I, you know, I rodeoed most of my life before I moved to Nashville, and I'd be in the horse business or rodeo or something like that. Yeah, I think I'd be in the horse business, running a barn somewhere, possibly. I don't know. I work. I kind of do seasonal uh, endeavors. Like I, I'm a ski coach for the month of December. Uh, back in Idaho, I go back and and like do you know refresher courses. I was a ski racer growing up, so I I do that every year and 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 it. And it works my quads a little bit but I really enjoy um, works my quads <laughs> yeah <laughs> running the ski program but I don't even know I think if we, I wasn't in the business um, I mean I I think I might be like teaching fiddle or um, that's music okay uh, <laughs> I'd probably be homeless and crazy Prob I mean honestly that's also music <laughs> <laughs> you guys are awesome. like it's like you finish each other's sentence. You have really good like this is good chemistry here. Tony Thomas. So with the American Young music that's to come, can you work in another tech company like when John wrote the uh, Woman Like You song that was a big hit for Lee Bryce and had Microsoft in it? I think it's the first time Microsoft was ever in a song. That was you love work like in, crazy. Yeah. Love like crazy. Well, I'm we're sorry. Working on the, like we're crazy. working on the we're working on the Google Plus. Uh, yeah, Google Plus in a song. Or Apple you know in a is? song. <clears throat> Love is war when it comes to my computer because it almost ends up out my window every now and then. There's about as technical as I can get. Christy leaves her phone at home on a regular basis and it drives me crazy. Yeah. I like to talk to people. Like this is really neat, but, but I not would on love, the phone. Yeah, if you guys were <laughs> here, then we could, you know, drink together and that would be a whole nother element of fun too. But it's really incredible. It's a little freaky. Well, uh, I, I it's just fun watching you guys. I think we, we have some, we need to wrap it up. Sorry. Or, or do we have somebody waiting? Sorry, we talk I a lot. No, I, oh, I, I, I see them giving me a. Oh my God, George Strait is here? 
Oh, I'm just kidding. <laughs> but I know I was asking everybody this. I've actually been asking everybody this, George Strait. It's like uh, it's 16. That was 16. mean. Everybody, the number one, their favorite number one for uh, that George Strait's had over the 60 hits. Do you have a favorite? I liked Friends in Low Places. <laughs> Dork. I put her up for that. I put her up That's for that. That's awesome. <laughs> no, I love you. I, I, you know, what's funny is I totally, no, I know. I like Garth. Garth's yeah. like, oh yeah, I got in on him. I got. I mean, in I have George. so many. I no. mean, uh, the chair. Check you it, love yes. the chair. Oceanfront property. Yes or no. Check yes or no. Right or wrong. Uh, Marina yes. Del Rey is probably my favorite. You know what? Amarillo. I'm sorry. Amarillo by more. I just have it. that's because, and I know I've played that four it's million times in my life. Do you know who recorded that song first? Who? But you don't know this, Chris Ledoux, "Life of a Rodeo Man," 1974. Wait, I do know that because mm -hmm. I think I, that was the very first one I ever heard. Sorry, we'll get going on that. No, I love it. I, you know what? <laughs> this is a reality show right here. This <laughs> that's just, funny. Like, watching this, we'll be here all day, folks. Uh, <laughs> who, I don't see anybody that we do. We have someone next. They're we like their, super more oh. famous people than American Young. So let's Cup. get let's wrap this up. All right, come on in. <laughs> the funnier oh. too, and better looking. And do you know how traumatic it is to wear sleeveless shirts and see how big <laughs> your arms actually look, ladies? I'm just going to go ahead and say, I'm just realizing I need to stop lifting weights. Okay. <laughs> oh, we're cutting off. No, we have Crystal Keith wonderful. sitting there. And it was funny as I've been sitting here looking at her, I've been talking to her on the internet. And she's just big. And now I see she's like a person. A, a real person. Is that funny what internet? Oh, come, um, thank you guys so much. Enjoy your week. <laughs> CMA Fest. <laughs> What did I just do? We are going to introduce the big person awesome. coming up. <laughs> what happened? I love it. That oh, just awesome. No, it's like a different. No, 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 no. It's like because when you talk to people online, they are this avatar, right? Yeah. And then you finally meet them in real life and it's just. And they're not blue. And they're not. Yeah. And they're like all or they're not wearing a sombrero <laughs> or passed out on a bus. I know. Yeah. 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 All right. Sorry. You guys that. are awesome. Thank you so it's much. It's so good to see you. You too. I love. I I'm sure we'll see you again really soon. Yeah, we will. Hope. Yeah. Okay. It's you know nice what I'm to finally meet you. I, I feel like I know you. I said, I know. I said, I'm, you know, I'm coming in here to do this, and I was like, that's Jessica. I, I know. know. Her. And then I, like I know her. When I was looking over, though, I'm like, oh, I don't have my glasses on. I sat on them <laughs> in Tucson. <laughs> that's a song right there. Yeah. It is. I sat on my glasses in Tucson, yeah. and they're like in two pieces. And I thought if I tape, tape them, them up, tape them. That would have been hot. Nerd chic. It is so cool. So you had a big old year. I have so far. It's been amazing. And the wedding, um, how, well, you just got married was like a couple months ago? No, well, I actually got married a couple years ago. Oh, I thought it, yeah, the song was. The song um, just got released. Okay, so that's yeah, why I, I thought, okay. It. I wrote it, it back was, in um, 2010. Okay, and married. that story that I want to hear about, yeah. their first dance, we t I'll let you tell the story. Cause well, um, I, I had written a song for my dad. I wanted a song that. You know, I could give to him as a gift for, for my wedding because the whole day is about, you know, me and my husband. And um, I'm really close to my dad. And so I just wanted to give him a special moment in the day. So I didn't consult with him about the father-daughter dance. Usually the dad gets to pick the dance and or they pick it together. And I just wrote one. And uh, he didn't know anything about it. I used all of his people, the studio he uses, the engineer. Um, I wrote it with one of his background vocalists or with his background vocalist, Micah Roberts. And um, and her friend Sonia Rutledge and so all of his people and he didn't hear anything about it until we were walking on the dance floor. And then through the whole, I heard through the whole dance that he was just he talked the <laughs> whole yeah surprising I know <laughs> about how, well no and was telling you how the song is interesting because it's it's from the from the daughter's, daughter's perspective which is really rare. I mean I I searched for for months trying to find the perfect song from a daughter to a father and I couldn't find anything. So I'm a songwriter, so I just decided to write it. And you're almost at eight. It's like eight hundred thousand. I'm over a million. It's a million. I went to a million, a million fifty thousand or something. Oh my god! Yeah, that was quick. Cause oh, it, in six was, weeks. Wow. Okay. Yeah, so by June first, we were at a million. I know amazing. we wanted to hit this really cool story about Daddy. Will you dance with me? But um, Tony Thomas, Seattle. He's actually yeah. 
Hey, Tony. You know hey there, Crystal. Me? Tell me about growing up around cameras and, and people wanting to, to talk to your dad. Has that helped you, just that understanding of the media environment so that when you're thrown into something like CMA Fest week this week, it's not quite as overwhelming as it is for maybe other artists in your position? Oh yeah, um, you know I, I didn't really grow up around cameras myself. I I, I was kind of kept out of the spotlight. Me and all my siblings were, but um, but watching my dad do um, interviews, I definitely watched them from a more personal standpoint than most people would watch them. So um, as a kid, I was kind of a sponge. I knew that this was the industry I was going into, so I took the opportunity to learn everything I could, every chance I got. Awesome. Yeah, Bethany Priest. Hey, so I want to know, I mean, obviously your dad's been very successful. What's the number one thing that you learned from him that you use for your work ethic? Um, well, work really hard, but also stay grounded. Um, I think, you know, he everywhere he goes, people are always like, you know, I loved his crew and I loved him and he's so down to earth and awesome. And, um, and you know, it's, it's definitely my goal to leave that mark on um, – on venues that I visit and perform at, you know, I want I want people to know that you know I'm a very normal person. So to to stay grounded and and down to earth, um, but then you know in the studio, you know, you have to work uh, because I'm his daughter and I'm going to have criticisms from that. I have to work, you know, an extra hundred percent. So I've got to give two hundred percent to everything, um, and and you know it's it's a challenge, but it's a challenge I like. Stephanie. Your single is amazing. First time I heard it, I just burst into tears. And I can't wait for the day I get married so I can use that as my daddy-daughter dance. Oh, thank you. <laughs> but coming into the country music industry with your dad being as successful as he is, did you think that people would kind of stand off, you know, with you coming into the to the country music community? Do you th did you think that people would kind of judge you already? Um, you know, there was always that possibility. Um, I had a lot of faith in country music, though. I've grown up here. I know a lot of people in the industry. Um, and, and, you know, there was the chance that I was going to get criticized because of that, but I was more than prepared for that. So, um, you know, I, I was really blessed. The country music community has completely just, you know, allowed me to come in with, you know, their arms open wide to me. So, um, you know, I haven't, I haven't experienced any of the negative criticisms that I was prepared for, um, thankfully, and, you know, I'm, I know that I'm blessed for that. Danielle Bowers. Yes, um, I have a question from Mary Sarah. She wants to know if your house in Oklahoma was okay with the recent tornadoes. Yeah, we um, we we did not get hit on May twentieth. We had uh, four days of of no power um, this past Friday with their storms, but um, but we had no we had no um, issues. My aunt lost her house, um, and my cousin um, got some windows knocked out, but. Um, you know, every, everyone's good and, and healthy, so we've just been trying to help our neighbors um, rebuild. Back to Tony. Crystal, what was it like the first time you were given money for a performance, that you were paid to sing? What was that moment like? Mm, cool. um, it was a $10 gift card to Sonic and a Marie, um, Marie Calendar pie. I thought it was right. pretty awesome. She's like, oh, get much better than that. Great. She's like, oh, and I was 23. No, I was, uh, I think I was 17, and uh, and I got a, a Sonic gift card, which I'm a I'm a huge Sonic fan, so that was that was really exciting for me. You can I work that I into your rider that you know all all future gigs. You will have to get your fee and a Sonic gift card. And a Sonic gift card, yeah, I'll take it. I'll take it. Um, back over Bethany. What is the one thing you have to have with you when you're on the road? Oh, um, well, like I four suitcases of like hair and makeup products, just because I love to play with uh, with hair. I, I'm a cosmetologist. I'm a licensed cosmetologist, so that is. I think I've got the world. Um, the what's it called? The Guinness Book of World Records for the amount of hair products I have. I have three bathrooms, and all of them are filled with hair products. Well, so. You have amazing hair. Thank like, you. It, it's awesome. Thank you. Um, we have to wrap up, but um, we're asking everybody this question. George Strait, 60, number one hit yeah. in 60 years. What's your favorite yeah. George Strait song? Um, Oceanfront Property. That's a pretty amazing one. 
Okay. Yeah, you can't beat it. And why? I don't know. It's like just one of those. It's just one of those songs that that you just sing along to, and and um, it just I don't know. It takes you back to to kind of like good old country. Oh, I wish I could sit here and talk to you for like hours. <laughs> uh, they're going to we'll get the, back together. In, yeah, when you go back in the other room, yeah. the Google uh, Haley's going to do a Google Plus yeah. chat. He's gone country and the Steam Chat community, and you can talk more with Crystal. And then we're gonna come back and we'll do like an hour long one of these with you yeah because I could I'll be here ask you a thousand more questions yeah it's I'm funny. excited it's so nice this to finally is such you. a bigger because <laughs> like, I you know that was just funny thank you so much Crystal yeah, it's no I think problem. I'm coming up next thank we have to you. go to Bradley Shoes. Oh, the shoes are just amazing. I am working on your shoes for you. You're getting me shoes? Yes. Oh my god, they're really cool. Can, yes. you, can you pull them up to the camera? It, I forget what the. These are Converse. The, right oh, those. Those are the ones. The deal. The well, those are Jordans. Dilly. I had got some new ones that I'm saving for later this week. Oh my gosh. Okay. Well, you take a picture and uh, yes. I'll tweet them and yes. get all that. So Dakota Bradley, lots to talk about with him. Um, I'll start with this. Is this your first CMA Fest from the point of being an artist? Yes, definitely. Performing places? Yeah, what, it's what would, pretty surreal. I know, right? Yeah. Oh my gosh. Uh, Tony Thomas. Dakota Haight from Seattle. How you doing? I'm good. How are you, man? What is your go-to app? If we see you on your phone, what are you doing? <sighs> my go-to app? Um... Don't take this the wrong way, but my go-to app is Grand Theft Auto Vice City when I'm on the plane. There we are. Grand Theft Auto and take my anger out. Oh. <laughs> my anger towards traveling. Are you play you play versus other people online? Do I do what? You're playing against other real people online? No, this is just me playing against. Ah, uh, oh, very good. Computer, right? Yeah, the computer. Awesome, Bethany. Hey, so your career obviously has not been very long, but so far, what's been the highlight for you? Um, I was on the Ellen Show like two years ago, and that was the highlight, but earlier this year, I got the opportunity to work with Tim McGraw on my album, and he, he produced my entire record, which was pretty much a dream come true, and I still pinch myself every day, and it's just crazy to sit here and say that Tim McGraw produced my album and picked my single for me, which is out on iTunes now. It's crazy. Something, something. It's something like something. Something like something. So, uh, Stephanie. Name one of the strangest places you've ever performed. The strangest places I've ever performed. Um, geez. Um, in the, this place called the Hip Hop Shop, downtown Franklin, Tennessee. I performed on the counter, sitting on the counter. Like one of those, like... 80s TV. There's one of those 80s shows where you're just where you're sliding around or just sitting there. Well, I was just sitting there playing guitar, but that was probably the weirdest place I've ever. The hip hop shop. Yeah. What'd you sing? Um, I sang. Uh, I don't even know. This was like two years ago. I don't even remember what I sang. Old songs that I'd written, just singing for some guy. And who was your favorite artist growing up? Oh my gosh, my favorite artist growing up was probably Stevie Ray Vaughan or John Mayer. Awesome. Yeah. Um, Danielle. Yeah. Yeah, I had myself on mute. I'm sorry. I can hear you now. I can hear you now. Who are you looking forward to seeing the most here in Nashville this week? Um, everybody, because this is my first time and I haven't really seen anybody other than like the ACM. So, <sighs> anybody that I can. Awesome. No favorites. No. Uh, back over to Tony. Are you an animals guy? Do you have pets, dogs, cats, oh, yeah. fish, birds? I've got dogs, fish, cats, and birds. I've got a stray cat that lives outside my house that we, for some reason, fed and now won't leave. We've got, right now, we have five dogs living in my house, which is a long story, but we've got wow. five dogs living in my house. <laughs> what um, that's uh, intense. And, uh, we've got a yellow lab who's a puppy. We've got a Jack Russell Terrier. We've got a uh, miniature something. It's annoying. We've got um, another, uh, what is it called? It's like a, 
Cocker. It's a. Uh, I don't even know. We've got a lot of dogs. Uh, I just know that I have a Jack Russell Terrier. It's my okay. dog. Do their names make and sense like to each to each other? Do, are there are their names in common with with each other? Um, like a fiend? Not really, because my one dog's name is Bandit, and one's name is Daisy, and one's name is Axel, and one's name is Bell. So they're really just kind of random. That's fun. <laughs> yeah. You have a fish too, though. No, I was just no, I think so. Oh, I have a fish. <laughs> I had a fish at one time, but it's really tragic how it how it passed. Oh no. Yeah. Oh, yeah, I got it. No, my house burned down and the fish went with it. Oh dear lord, I'm so sorry. Yeah. Um oh boy. Um, I think we on, had a fish. I know. I, I don't I have a fish bowl. It's just filled with vodka. It's my vodka reservoir. Just kidding. It's okay. That's all Whatever I'm you like. No, I'm just kidding. Whatever the you fish like. died. He, he got drunk though, so he drank. I mean, nothing. obviously. No. Can't live oh in god, vodka. Peter's going to get on me now. Oh no. Hey, um, <laughs> so <Wow. laughs> we're just kidding. A little bit. I still have a fishbowl of vodka. It's right behind you though. You want some? No. Um, so, no. so um, <laughs> <laughs> I'm going to throw it back over to these guys, but uh, we get one last question from me is um, yeah. George Strait, 60, number one hits for his 60 for first birthday, so 60 and 60. What is your favorite George Strait number one and why? Probably give it away. Um, for one, Jamie Johnson wrote it. And I just think the song is just such a real country song. It's just, for me, it's just such a real country song. I love that song. Awesome. Uh, and then one more question from you guys. And then we have Colt Ford waiting. Colt Ford. Colt Ford. My man. Woo, woo. I'll go. Yes. Um, if you could ask any country artist for advice, who would you ask and what would you ask them? I would ask Keith Urban how the heck he got so darn good at guitar. And I would say, teach me your ways. Definitely. Awesome. Thank you. Thank you. Um, okay, so thank you so much. And thank uh, you. What are you. Where are you performing out this week? Performing at Wild Horse Saturday night and Margaritaville Saturday night. And how can people stay up with you? On Twitter, at Dakota Bradley. And are you on Google Plus? I think I am as of today. Oh, yeah, and you're going to go back there and chat with yes. people. So you guys can continue the conversation on Google Plus yes. with Dakota Bradley. And thank you so much for coming thank over you. here. I'm Thanks glad for to have you. Me. I'll see you again soon. That's right. I love thank you guys. I could talk Colt Ford out of his boots. Could somebody quote me on that that's and a, tweet that's a that? That's a good thing to do. That's a good tweet. That's a good tweet. We're Twitter I buddies. Know. I know. I love tweeting with you. I you know. actually, you're really active on it, and it's it's neat because I think people are like, you respond. I try to. I literally try to answer every single message. It takes. Yeah, I just had a conversation actually. We sent a thing to Twitter going because after a couple of hours they'll shut you down because they think you're spamming. Right. I'm like, I eat spam. I don't send out <laughs> spam. I, I mean. I'm like, you got to quit cutting me off. I can't answer. All it shuts me down for like two hours. Yeah, or like, it's, I think it's 100. What it is, you can't go over 100 tweets in an hour and yeah. 1,000 a day. But, you know, that's how I started, and that's how I ended up where I'm at with half, like, as many followers. It's because I just answer everything. Yeah, I said. like it. I mean, the fans, if it wasn't for the fans, I wouldn't be here. So. Oh, my God. And your Facebook, you're like, you're at a million. It's getting much. close to that, yeah. A million, and yeah. then um, you're now on Google+. Plus, and yeah, I noticed absolutely. you're rocking Google+. Plus. Absolutely. This is cool. These are this is the perfect platform for you, and you're like, awesome. Electronic, you're electronic thunder. And um, I like to talk, so it's good. And I get to sit next to you. It's even uh, better. I'm keeping him forever. Day. Tony Thomas, Seattle. Question. Hey, Colt. Hey, buddy. Now, tell me about working with the amazing John Anderson. When I heard your guys' version of Swing, and I thought, you know, I I, I had probably the reaction many people did of like, oh man, don't don't be somebody redoing swinging again and it just was electric from the first note tell me about hanging out with john man thank you for saying that i i had your reaction too i didn't want to do it at first because john and i have become pretty good friends and he came to me and asked me about doing that i was like man i had that wild and blue record when i was a freshman in high school and i was it was such a that song was a big part of my life and i was like that's a classic i don't i really don't want to get involved with messing with that and he just kept on and kept on after me. He's like, no, it'll be fun. And we do something cool and modern. We won't change the song. Just let you do what you do. And 
and finally, I mean, as long as he wanted, I would have never done that on my own, believe me. But as long as John wanted to do it, it was a lot of fun to do, to be a part of such an amazing song. He's one of my favorite singers. And, uh, you know, it was just really cool to work with a legend like that. That's something I can check off my bucket list. I think the first day that it was released and I saw the video for, for you guys doing Swing and I played it like five times in a row and then started contacting people online of like, you got to hear this, you got to hear this. So uh, great to have cool. you. I appreciate that. It was a lot of, it was just a huge honor to work with John. I was extremely humbled by that. They let me be a part of it. Awesome. Uh, Bethany. Hey, so I want to know if you went into a karaoke bar, what song are you going to sing? That is a good question. I tend to stay away from the karaoke thing. I like to watch karaoke, but I don't like to do karaoke. <laughs> I don't know what I would do. I've, I've watched a lot of it. You can find some interesting things at a karaoke bar. I mean, there's some fun people watching there, but I don't know what I would do. I, I honestly have never done it. That's a good question. I don't know. Maybe Run DMC would be something easy for me to do. Or You're Convoy. Gonna... I, I redid Convoy on one of my records. Maybe I'd do that. Oh, You're like not going to pull out a Martina McBride song like I everyone I don't think that would be good for anybody. <laughs> uh, yeah, that'd be bad for everybody. I, I, I'm smart enough to know better than to do that. No, he's going to whip out with some Shania. Who's bad? Have your boots. They had one of her outfits over there at CMT today, and they said, that look, what would that look like on you? I was like, it would get to about this part of my one leg, and that would be it. <laughs> Shimmery, shiny, Colt Ford. Um, Danielle, Go. Yeah, I just have to say, online blew up as soon as you walked in the door, Colt. Um, and I want to know, um, what brought on this movement with your fans to get you on the Ellen DeGeneres show? That's hilarious. That's funny. It literally just started with one of my fans was like, man, it would be awesome to see Colt on there. And they know, they've they seen my live show, so I dance around more than normal people. Me and Luke are always goofing around, dancing around, doing silly stuff and they were like colt you'd be fun to have you dance with ellen and i said and i said yeah that'd be fun and then it just went bananas i meant but she hasn't called yet i wish she would i'd like to go in there and dance a little bit i i think me and ellen would have fun i'm a pretty nice guy you should ask that dakota broadley when he was leaving yeah i know I you know I, I i know dakota we wrote a song that's on my my new record that, that we wrote a song together it was really cool didn't you actually just recently do something with jamie o'neill uh, yeah, I did a song with, with, with somebody that she's working with, yeah. Oh, sure okay, did. I thought she was... Uh, oh, she's, what together. a great singer she is. Oh, my God, that girl got some pipes. Yes. Mm. A belter. Uh, Stephanie. Sorry. Well, <laughs> you, you are so good to your fans, always tweeting responses. I've talked to you a couple times on Twitter. What is your most memorable fan experience or encounter that you've had so far? Wow. Uh, honestly, I... I've had so many, it would be hard for me to say. I I just of the thought process that my time is no more important than anybody else's time. So they took their time to send me a message. They buy my records. They come to shows. So I love talking with them and getting to know them. And Twitter has been amazing because I, I have real conversations with them. And I talk about their life and they tell me all kinds of stories. And I got a 15-year-old boy asking me for advice on girls, which – I don't know what to tell them there, but I'm at, uh, you know, I mean, it's just, it's unbelievable some of the things I've had. And I just had a girl today ask me to sign an autograph, said that she played their song, my song at her brother's funeral. And it, that is an extremely humbling thing for somebody to say to you. I was a part of their happiest time and a part of their saddest time. But the song, something I wrote is a part of them and made them feel good about it. And I mean, I've had so many fan experiences like that. I, I mean, I've got to know them. I've showed up at people's houses. I've gone to eat with them and, and, and told they told me they were eating somewhere. And I, I've showed up. It's just, I think that's great, man. I wish more artists, to be honest with you, would interact with their fans because if it wasn't for them, you wouldn't be here. You don't want to, you don't want to have to go back and work a real job. You better be thankful to those fans that you got. Awesome. Uh, okay. So I am going to go back over to Dodie Thomas. Hey, Colt, when you were younger, what was the most out of your way you ever went to go see someone live? Whether that was the farthest you went or had to, you know, be creative to get into a show. Who did you just absolutely have to see when you were younger? That's a good question. Uh, most out of the way. I mean, you know, I'm, a, I'm from a small town, so I didn't get to really, there wasn't much. I didn't have enough money to go out of the way to get anywhere. I couldn't afford to get far enough to be out of the way. Uh, but I've seen all kinds of things. I remember seeing Kenny Rogers and Dolly Parton, and I saw the Commodores, which was really cool. And, you know, live music is just 
unbelievable to me. And I, I, I just, I'm such a fan of that. That's why I play so many shows. So I don't know that I've gone too far out of the way. I've done it a few times as I've got older, got gone out of the way to see some things that I thought were really cool to, to go see Tom Petty, to see Fleetwood Mac when they were kind of saying they weren't going to play anymore. So some of those bands that you, you're not sure that you may ever see again, I, I'll, I'll make a road trip to see that. Awesome. Uh, so we've been asking everybody, uh, George Strait, 60 number one hits in 60 yeah. years. Dang. That's hard to believe. 60. Crazy, That's crazy. That's incredible. I know, right? What, what is your favorite of those number ones? Wow, he's got a lot of good songs. Uh, I, I've always been a huge fan of Amarillo by Morning. I mean, I, I, I you know, it's just... It's, I just love that song, but I I really like True. Although it's newer, I love Troubadour a whole bunch too. I mean, I just the the message that that said. Uh, he's incredible. I mean, I, I I that that would be one of the things people ask me all the time. Who would you like to? That'd be on my bucket list to do a song with George with George Strait. I don't know if that'll ever happen, but that would dang sure be on my bucket list. How exciting is that? Yeah, you go from like I loved your part in the Moonshine Bandits have that song. Yeah. What is that? Oh, uh, Outlaws. That is just, that's such a fun song. <laughs> that's kind of crazy That's got, what, like a few million hits? It's fun, though. That music, it, music's more powerful than religion and politics. It, it transcends a lot of things. So if you put creative people in a room together, you can come up with something fun and original. I, I was with Jason last night for a while, and he introduced me to Lenny Kravitz and talked to him for a while, and we just talked about music. Somebody asked me, like, what did y'all talk about? I was like, music? I mean, just making music. If you get people that are original and honest with yourself, then you can come up with something cool, you know, I, and and that's, I think the fans like to see that. They like to see collaborations and different things. I mean, it it makes it fun. You don't want to be the same thing over and over, over well, again. And our audience, like, no matter what, well, they like to hear a story. They want to get a good story. Those are fun to be part of the song and everything, to make those part of the song. And I, I, I couldn't agree. I, I mean, I just, I tell stories. I mean, to me, that's what country music's all about is that lyric and telling the stories about whatever it may be, what you're seeing and what you're feeling and everything. And that's, really all I write about. Well, I, mean, I feel like when I'm sitting next to you or whenever you tweet or talk to me or pay attention to me, I feel like I'm literally the next generation, like the Merle Haggard and the Waylon. You're like that to the next generation. I mean, you're I've heard amazing. a bunch of people say that, and that's unbelievably humbling. I don't, I don't well, think that I could ever fill those guys' boots, but it, it's, it's nice to hear people say that. And, and Merle has said some nice things to me, and, and George had said to me before, Keep doing what you do. I appreciate how honest and original you are. And Charlie Daniels has said the same thing to me. And, you know, uh, I got to recut Only Daddy Walked the Line on, on the tribute album to Waylon that uh, Shooter and them asked me to be a part of. So those kind of things are ma let me know I'm doing the right thing. You know, mm -hmm. I meant that I'm unbelievably respectful of, of country music because that's who I am as an artist. So And we'll do this again sometime because, too, I didn't, we didn't even get into that. I don't Colt, have to go nowhere. Colt was a pro golfer. A pro golfer. That's a true story. It's it about is. About it. Ago, but How many people story. knew? That? Like, I don't think a lot of people know that. Did you guys down here know that he was a pro golfer? I think I had Danielle Google it one day, and we found some pictures. Yeah, we were, we were yeah, picking really, up really pictures. We found your really cool golf outfit. Yeah, I have, <laughs> American I flag pants stuff. and stuff were awesome. <laughs> you rocked I them. I like the the ones with the polka dots on them. Yeah, my uh, twister pants. I try to get people to play twister with me. And what was like? Were you still golf a lot now? Not as much as I'd like. Not as much as most everybody else does. But sure? I can still beat Jake and Darius and all them, so yeah, they can't stand that. I bet that. Are we up? Who do we have? Someone else coming in here? Like come hang out and live in our. Oh, do we have the two? Come on in. Y'all can just Cole come with us. Wow, yeah. this is crazy talking about YouTube and um, internet. CJ LaRose, a YouTube sensation. <laughs> You can sit in my lap. And then Angela, okay. Oh, that's I wasn't fair. sure what was happening. But... I don't know. But this, oh, do you this want me to sit in your fun. lap? Yes, please. Oh, we're about to get right, in trouble here. Saying, by who? So we've been. <laughs> this uh, is awesome. CJ LaRose and Angela, they're friends of mine, and they've been, if you haven't seen this, but they're our back. They've been getting everybody on stage and helping uh, make this all go smoothly. CJ, is met, I met her through the interwebs. The, inter, the internet the inter machine. The yeah. The whole thing, the, what, called the, the World Wide Web. She has a fun story about like the animal. Tell him you, he's real animal, like oh my a dog gosh. I, I started. Did you say I was an animal? Dog, yeah. You I'm are. Dog, so oh, and dog, I'm dog, 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 dog rescuing. Absolutely. Dog yeah. rescuer. I started my YouTube channel with dog rescue videos, and then I saw some other girls, and I thought it was like save a million dogs from this, but I had like five hits on each video, and it was all myself clicking and watching <laughs> myself watching back. <laughs> and then I started putting my music up there. 
ding, ding, ding. And, and that worked better? Yes, and I actually have saved some dogs. So. Well, that's good. So my world goal of saving dogs is underway now. That's awesome. Yeah. Saving dogs, one country music artist at a time. Absolutely. Yes. <laughs> um, okay, so I know, are we going to... you? This is fun. Here, I'm having a great here. time. Okay, so CJ, <laughs> you guys, do you want me to be on this knee I, and she gets I, on this one? I can do that, whatever you'd like to do. So we're I'm letting it all twang out. We're redneck knee tie tech. So um, this week performing, I know you've got a lot of performances. Yeah, I've been, I did, a ton. Yeah, I've done a bunch of stuff already, and then I play River Stage on Sunday. Okay. i got to hit the road for a few shows, and then I come back and play River Stage on Sunday. And you live in Nashville. No, right? I live in yeah. Georgia. Okay. Yeah. So I live in Georgia. Georgia's home for me and uh, probably always will be. My kids are way more comfortable there. I mean, that's where they that's what they've always known. They're close to their parents, my parents, and it just uh, it, I'll, I'll, I can do it from there. Awesome. Um, awesome. You guys, you're playing a couple places today? Yeah, well, I'm singing at 245 today, and then CJ's joining me on a I'm song that we wrote together. Yeah, we so. wrote a song. BB's? At yeah, BB King's. King's. So. That'll be yeah. fun. Yeah. Awesome. Uh, Angela Hess. And CJ LaRose, uh, you guys, questions, I mean, for the little whole, the whole group of us, go and hit it. Uh, Miss Bethany. Oh, my unmute button didn't want to work. Um, I actually had a question still for Colt that I wanted to ask him about your music when you choose to record a song. I saw that you co-wrote most of your songs. Yeah. How important is that for you? Like, if your song is written by somebody else and you love it, do you tend to lean towards that, or do you really want something that you wrote to be on your I album? I like great songs. I don't care who wrote them. It doesn't have to be a hit songwriter. I don't care who, where it came from. Great songs are great songs, and they live on way past the artist. So for me, I write most of it myself just because I I, I have to. <laughs> a lot of them try to give me some things, and... It just, a lot of it makes more sense for me to write, but I've cut a lot of outside songs. The new single coming out with me and Jason Aldean, Driving Around Song, is the only song on the record that I didn't write, but most people would hear it and would never believe that I didn't write it. So uh, I, I just love, I love great songs. I don't care where they come from. Um, I just got the note. We have to wrap this up. I've got Charlie no, to come in, but let me I'm tell you this. She's sitting in my lap. Yeah, but let me tell you this. All this whole group of people and you guys, um, there, Colt's going to go in the back room with the Google and do the... That sounded he's like gonna, it was... Gonna Colt's go in the going back room in the back room. Google. Hey. He's going to go and hang out in our Google Plus community, the country music community with Haley, and you can keep asking questions over there, and you guys are going to go and Google it up. Are you going to continue Ooh, to sit on my lap? I can, I, we, I'll get up. No, I'm <laughs> I am really feeling at home here. I know. It's very comfortable. Tell me what you want for Christmas. I, don't know. I, know, I, I thought it was right. next. I'd like a number one record. <laughs> me too. <laughs> There. Yeah, you guys all get the, yeah, y'all talk back there about yeah. some kind of project because I can oh. see something happening. Oh, I know be. it's starting I'm right here. Hot girls, we're about to right first. Two hot Little girls baby. and a fat guy. That sounds like a TV show. <laughs> a reality show. Yes. Yeah. If you're talking about P H A T, pretty hot and tempting, right? Is that me? Yeah, yeah you're fat. Sweet. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> all right, keep fighting the good fight. Love you, um, Charlie. Worship up next. Thank you so much, Quote. See guys. You've been a busy boy this week. It's been a crazy but awesome week. Are we all? Are we on? Hello, fine. World Wide Web people. Uh, hello and much love. And I peeped you last night. I was at the sh or at the after show. I saw you. Oh yeah, wasn't at that the, fun? Yeah, good job. Thank you. Having a good time. I'm having the time. That was life. a great party. It was a great party. Y'all uh, threw down. We did, and and I was going into that party having left here the ramen, 
Uh, I got to play with one of my heroes last night, Marty Stewart. Well, I, he, he was standing on the side of the stage, and I'm glad I didn't look over and notice because it would have made me even more nervous than I already was. But uh, Oh, my God. So you still get nervous around other performers? It's this stage more this than stage. anything. I think, you know, the Opry Nostalgic. or the Ramen, it's just uh, you can't can't help it. I know. I'm sitting here going, I am doing this worldwide video broadcast live from the Ryman. Holy I cow. Know, it's crazy. How did I end up in this life? And sitting next to Charlie Hersham. Well, we go back. I know. We go back. We go That's way good. back. So, um, Charlie, I'm going to throw over to Bethany Priest. Yes. and ask you a question. All right. Hey, so what is the strangest thing you've ever been asked to autograph? <laughs> uh, <laughs> I got to autograph a military vehicle in Iraq once. Maybe not the strangest oh. thing, but uh, one of the coolest. Uh, we were playing, I was in a band that, that went to Iraq for about 10 days, and we were in this tiny, tiny place they called the Chicken Coop because it was so small. And I forget the name of the vehicle, maybe an MRAP uh, or something like that, uh, but they had a sign the inside of the, uh, of the main where all, all the soldiers would sit when it was in transit. That was pretty cool. Very cool. Thank you. Uh, Tony Thomas. Hey there, Charlie. Hey, the uh, that band you mentioned, King Billy, I had a chance to see you perform with them one time. Uh, incredible high energy uh, performance uh, and vibe that you guys had going on. Can you talk about the almost uh, Music City boot camp environment that you got from that and what you got from doing music oh, so intensely? Absolutely. With King Billy and uh, in the studio, and I've, I've been fortunate to play on other folks' records. I, I was able to play on Chief for Eric Church and uh, Dirk Bentley's upcoming Riser. Uh, on the stages here at CMA Fest, this is I've been in Nashville. This will be my s year seven come September in Nashville, and I've I've backed people up. Uh, the the big takeaway for me is uh, everybody here uh, has a genuine love, obviously for for the music, uh, but it really is a community, a tight knit community and family, and uh, everybody really is rooting for each other. Uh, really proud to see my friend Cree Harrison. Uh, I used to play guitar for her, and, and now she's. Uh, just the, the the doors are all opening for her, so it's just we're here to to do what we love and to keep learning and uh, to all rise together. Awesome, Stephanie. Hey, Charlie. Um, I just listened to your debut album just the other night, and I am addicted. Now I've been following you since King Billy days. I would travel four or five hours to come see you guys. Yeah. Do you still talk and hang out with Donnie and and all of them? I do. I, we don't see as much of each other as we used to, but, you know, John and TJ, uh, his brother TJ wasn't in the band, but John and TJ are uh, working on a record uh, at Capitol, and uh, my buddy Matt is playing with Hunter Hayes, and Kevin, the drummer, is playing with the Henningsons, and uh, so many other folks. We all lived in this house on Villa Place we called Hotel Villa, and uh, there was just a great community of guys. Some of the guys in my band I know from that and from Berkeley, and uh, just it's, it's, it speaks to the, the spirit of Nashville. Can you describe to um, people what they're going to hear when they get to listen to your debut album when it comes out? Oh, yes, I would love to. It's called Rubber Band. It comes out August 20th, and uh, Rubber Band's one of the songs on there. And uh, I guess case in point for what to expect, uh, on the song Rubber Band, I play this riff that sounds like the Soggy Bottom Boys got together with Audio Slave and wrote a song. And I, I take a 60s Martin, tune the E string down to A and I run it through an amplifier with distortion. So it's all these influences I've had from the bluegrass and Vince Gill and Marty Stewart to the cover bands I played in in high school where we'd play everything from Huey Lewis to ZZ Top and everything in between uh, to my days in Boston where I really started to dedicate uh, time to the craft of writing songs. Uh, they say you have your whole life to make your first album and I truly took that to heart. Excellent. I love your answer. Um Back Tony Thomas or Danielle, whoever wants to jump in. Yeah, tell me about seeing fans and dealing with fans. I got a phone ring in the background. Tell me about the fan experience at CMA Fan Fest this week. Well, that's really what this this week is all about. And uh, obviously, anytime we get on a stage, that's what it's all about. Uh, I, I, I'm just really more than anything. I'm I'm, I'm grateful and humbled uh, every chance I get to meet fans firsthand. Uh, uh, like you were saying, you've you've driven four or five hours to to see me play and uh, that's that's a uh, that's a huge deal but at the same time when you're a fan that's nothing you don't think about it like those hours fly by because this magical thing of music that we get to share uh, is so powerful and uh, if, if you think about it like a, a guitar feeding back through an amplifier uh, 
I don't know who the amp is, and I don't know who the guitar is. One of us, the, the say the fans are the amp, and the, and I'm the guitar. Like, you don't get feedback without both. So it's a critical piece of what I do every day. That is, I have never heard anybody say that. That is awesome. Thank you. Like the feedback, the fans are the feedback in the guitar. That's really yeah, cool. Man. And that's the coolest part, right? There's a song Ooh. in there somewhere. This is that's a that's very cool. I love that. Yeah. Awesome, Be Bethany. We have hey, so question. yeah. So when you're out on the road, what are three things you cannot live without? <laughs> Coffee. Yes. Hot sauce. Mm. Uh, or I guess I can live without hot sauce, but I'll put it in there. Uh, and I gotta have my phone with me because I've, I'm always tweeting and Instagramming and vining. You guys hip to vine? The it's like Instagram. Hip to vine. Hip to vine. I'm hip to vine. Yeah, yeah. Well, you know, oh, it's, yeah. it's like Instagram but with videos. <laughs> Uh, and so I'm, I've got to stay in touch digitally with, with everybody. Uh, so I'd, I'd say those three things. But if, if I had to live without hot sauce, i got to have my buddies with me. Uh, the guys that play in my band are good friends, and uh, it's, it's a joy to get to make music with them. And uh, We have many 4 a.m. calls at the airport, and that's something that is a little bit easier if you can joke around with your friends. So, Amen. <laughs> so. Oh, and before we go, uh, George Strait celebrated 60 number ones in 60 years. What's your favorite George Strait song? I'll tell you right now because I, I lived it. I lived it and I love the video. It stands out in my memory. Uh, check yes or no. Yes. I, I, I think I might have even written the check yes or no. I used to just, oh, man, I'd sing that song in the woods between my house and my best friend's house. I'd had a Walkman and I'd just I'd wear that song out. So. Oh, I love that. I, I, I did that because I could pick up sticks and pretend they were guitars, and really? nobody would see me. <laughs> You're so sweet and wholesome. It's so cool. I love I love getting to spend time Not with you. Not that wholesome. What? Oh, uh, no. Just Char kidding. Charlie's going to go, and he's going to head on over to our Google Plus community page, and he's going to keep the conversation going with Haley in the other room, right? That's right. you're a Googler now. That's too. right. You're a technology. You're a high-tech redneck. I love it all. Ugh. I love it all. All right, cool. Thank Thanks you guys so much, much. Charlie. All right. I love you. I think I've... Yeah. Oh, wow. Going to twang out. Oh, I don't even know what that means, but it sounds fun. It's uh, where high tech meets redneck. It's like Google Plus Hangout, but it's a twang out because we're country. All right. And I just made it up because I get bored and I make things. I think up. it's going to catch on. It's, it's catching on. It's, it's already so cool. catching on. Oh my God, your eyes and you have on the blue shirt that makes your eyes even pop oh, more. I did that you on, did on purpose. I did that on purpose. I see no, how you are. Do you have like it's a stylist? the only clean shirt that I've got left, actually. Dang, it's really, really like the eyes, the coloring. Well, the sun just, came, just out, came out. Like, awesome. we're like, oh. <laughs> we practiced that. We did. Um, hey, everybody. So Tony, you know this guy, Tony Thomas. Yeah. Seattle. Tony, hop on. Hey, Casey, you know what? When I was looking up your uh, bio stuff, I saw your middle name is Everett. My son's middle name is Emerson. He's still not so sure that he loves it. But tell me about Everett. Where'd that come from? That's a great question, actually. It came from the, uh, would be my great grandfather. Actually, his name was Everett. Did you and, have to grow uh, into it? Did you love it when you were a kid? Because I said my I've, son's sort of still learning to love his middle name. I've actually always, I was really, really happy with my name from the beginning. It's kind of like, uh, and I know there are things you can't control, but I'm really, really happy about my birthday, birthstone, you know, uh, what is it called? Astro astrological sign, you know, like I'm a Gemini. Uh, and, you know, all the random things that I have no control over at all, I've been a fan of, you know, my whole life. So something that uh, I, my mom, did, mom and dad did a good job naming me. I was like, Casey Everett James, I feel kind of like rolls off the tongue. Sounds that does. Good. It sounds cool. Yeah. I mean, a lot of people actually, uh, this morning, some lady asked me, she's like, is that, is that your real name? And I was like, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> didn't know, uh, didn't know you could. But if you think about it, there's a lot of people out there that have names that, uh, you know, like Stevie Wonder, his real name is not Stevie Wonder. You know it's I mean? not? No. And oh, you just totally blew that for yeah, me. Yeah, there's a bunch of, you know, there's a bunch of people that, that have names that, uh, like uh, Van Morrison, his real name is not Van Morrison. Not Van Morrison. Morrison. Yeah. Madonna, yeah, it's, it's Madonna's real name is Madonna, right? You know, I don't know that one. Maybe so. Reba's Maybe Reba. So. Yeah. Shania, Shania. But those are yeah. one-namers. True. See, it's like first you're a three-namer, and then you become a one-namer. That's right. It's not funny. But I, yeah. like I don't know that I would ever be a one-namer just because my name's too common. Yeah, I mean, 
Yeah. CJ, though. CJ. No, Casey, you're just Casey James, though. Yeah. It's exciting. It's funny. People that have known me for years still call me Casey James. I'm not sure why that is. Did you ever have a nickname like CJ? Uh, you know what? I was married for four years, and my in-laws call me CJ because uh, their son's name was Casey. Oh, was Casey. So, yeah, there was too many Casey's running around. <laughs> Bethany. Hey, so when you're out on the road and you miss being home, what do you do for kind of like a comfort? activity or do you have to like go to a certain restaurant or what do you have to do um wow i mean strangely enough i, I know it's a weird thing a weird way to answer this but being on stage is my comfort zone because that's what i did for years and years and so when i'm out and about you know no matter where i'm at being on stage makes me feel like i'm at home because that's what i did for you know when i was at home for years and years so now that i'm you know out and about you know, I may not know the area, I may not know the people, but once I get on stage, then I feel like I'm back at the house doing what I've always done. Thank you. What is yeah. something if, that everyone found out about you that they'd be really surprised to know about you? Like, do you have a strange, unusual hobby? No, not really. I think it's weird to say this, but I mean, because of, you know, American Idol and the show and everything, I think people know a lot more than they should about <laughs> me, you know, but yeah, I'm a, I'm, I don't think there's anything that would really surprise people. Um, I'm pretty, I think maybe, I think actually the one thing that people would probably be surprised about is that I'm actually quite shy and, and very kind of a solitary individual when I'm in situations other than being on stage. Then when I get on stage, it, 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 I'm in like a whole different person and this, this crazy different side of me comes out and I love to jump around and scream and shout and, you know, have fun. But other times I'm just, you know, like this, just hanging out and. Relaxing. That's interesting, though. Calm, you know? it's, it's like yeah. you're, when you get up there, you're kind of like, oh, yeah. Yeah, it's just a whole different, it's it, it turns something, on. yeah, exactly. Something different comes out of me there. But otherwise, I'm pretty quiet and, you know, like. See, back. some people have this opposite. They're like wild and crazy, and they get on stage and they shut down a little. Like, right. That's uh, crazy. Um, one uh, a question from Stephanie If you could have a do over in your life, what would you, what would you choose? I would not change one thing, or I wouldn't be sitting sitting where I'm sitting right now. So, uh, yeah, I don't I don't look at it that way. I mean, I don't know that. I mean, I would probably have a really long list if if I got into that. But I look at things uh, no matter what. If it's a mistake, or if it's uh, uh, something that hurt me, or you know, any of the things that happen to me, good and bad, I appreciate them for what they've done because they've all taught me something. They've always uh, I've tried to learn from everything, good and bad, and you know, all that being said, like I, you know, I wouldn't be here right now if it weren't for the mistakes and things like that that I've made and bad things that have happened to me as well. So, I wouldn't change a thing. Awesome. Uh, okay, so we're asking everybody this question: George Strait, sixty number one, sixty years. What? Amazing. I know, right? Unbelievable. Insane. And I always like, I always like to know, like, what is your favorite? It says a lot about people too. What their favorite? George Strait number one is? I'm a huge why. George Strait fan because I'm from Texas. So uh, there's a million songs that I love of his. Um, but the, one of the very first songs I ever learned how to play and sing at the same time was The Chair. Oh, yeah. yeah. I love that song. Yeah. And, so, and just that that's why you like it because you learn how to play it first. Yeah, I mean, I don't, you know, it's just got that, that memory of learning how to play and sing and remembering, you know, that was kind of my goal. And at that time in my life, I was listening to a ton of, you know, what I could. Uh, that kind of new wave of country. Uh, at the time when I was growing up, it was like Garth Brooks and you know George Strait had a million hits on the radio. And so I remember thinking, man, it would be really nice if I could, you know, play this guitar and sing at the same time rather than just play or sing. And that was one of the first songs. That one and there was it was actually a Garth Brooks song that I learned at the same time, the dance. But yeah, um, that's weird. The dance and the chair. I know, right? Anyways, yeah, that's that's the one that I remember. So it's got that you know memory in my mind of, you know, the very first time that I realized I can do these both things at the same time. That's kind of cool. Um, uh, Steph, the Bethany, or Tony, who hasn't asked a question. Actually, I have a question from online. Wait, are you, um, are you raising up the guitar? To, know, right? Yeah, that's no, my. I want to talk. <laughs> guitar. It's totally a flight. Look at that. Hold it up cute. again, Danielle. The Country Music Hall of Fame gave it to me last year. That is awesome. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> nice. Um, Flies getting I, killed with a guitar. Only time that happens, by the way. Absolutely. Um, okay, Holly Wapham from 
online wants to know what your favorite brand of shoe is. Favorite brand of shoe? Yeah. Uh, what am I wearing right now? Yeah, I don't think the brand is Tiger. I think it's an an an, an uh, how's that? You say that? How do you say that right there? Because uh, these are my favorite kind. Wait, what is it? It is Quicksilver Tiger or no? On it on Tsuka? On it on it Tsuka? Yeah. On it Tsuka. On it Tsuka. I mean, on it on it on it Tsuka. And now you all know. Yeah, uh, it's a funny thing because every time I go into the store, I pick out this pair of shoes, and it's the exact same pair of shoes that I've already got, but just in a different color. I do that with so black pants. I've done that literally four times. I have this pair of shoes in brown, white, seven. I have seven of them. Good times. No, I seriously do that. I have, I, maybe a lot of girls do this, but I have like a hundred different pairs of the same black pants. Well, the beautiful thing about it is that these are really cheap. Okay. <laughs> I mean, like, not, not and they're comfortable. Cheap, but they're like, I usually get them for like 35, 40 bucks, which for a pair of good shoes that are going to last, you know, a few years. And, and we're I've talking fashion yeah. with Casey James. Shocking. I've, I've, this is one thing that I've never talked about. This is fun. I I've like had another that. fashion question coming in from online. Oh, no. Hit me. Mary Sarah wants to know what kind of hair products you use. Oh, my God. Oh, great hair. Great um, hair. I think Bumble and Bumble is what I what I normally use, but uh, I'll be honest with you, I don't really use that much of it. I'll just eventually. This is going to be horribly uh, gross information for you, but I just don't wash my hair, and then eventually it gets nasty enough that it kind of just stays curly. And usually, when I go to like you know events that I need to look nice for, I haven't washed my hair for like about ten or eleven days, and everybody says, "Oh, your hair looks so nice. Would you use?" And, just smile and say thank you. <laughs> yeah, I washed it last night. It looks like crap right now, actually. <laughs> the humidity does it make it curl even more? No, the trick for that is you just use cold water, and it and it keeps it from like freaking out, frizzing out. Awesome. Uh, yeah. I know I spy uh, Lauren and Elena coming clinic. up next, but uh, anybody one any? Can we take one more question, or we have time for one more? You get the hey, thumbs up. Hey, Casey, I'm behind the camera. With with uh, your American Idol experience, fans got to know you in a way that's uh, much more intimate than a lot of artists who didn't have the TV experience. Did it take a while for you to get used to when people would come up to you and they, they know what you look like, they know all about you, and, and you don't know them other than they like your music? How, how does that balance out where, where someone knows so much about you and you don't know them? It's an interesting dynamic, no doubt, and I think most people, you know, Lauren included, would, would tell you um, it's a... It's a strange thing, I think, um, to have people have that familiarity with you without you having it with them. But at the same time, you have to respect the fact that if somebody's coming up to you and and saying, you know, hey, how are you? And you know, I saw you. I mean, there's a reason they're doing that. And usually, I take that as an honor that they're they're taking time out of their lives to say hello or tell me that, you know. Regardless, I mean, some people don't even never really acknowledge the fact that you you know, have a, a career or anything like that. It's more about, you know, the show and, and things like that. But I always try to respect it and appreciate it. And and you can always look at it one of two ways. And, and I choose to, at least I try to, and most of the time, try to look at it in a positive way. Awesome. Uh, so is that the wrap-up? And we've got Lauren Elena coming up next. And Thanks, y'all. Thank you so much. Where are you uh, performing at? Uh, I'll be week? at uh, Margaritaville this evening, uh, 1030 or 11 o'clock. And then I'm at the Opry, Grand Ole Opry, like the sign right there. Uh, tomorrow, I'm playing twice. I think I'm at the, both shows. And that's a huge lineup, and it's a sold-out crowd. I think Lauren's going to be there. Lauren's sure. going to be there? Gonna be she there? just said she's going to be there? Yep. And, uh, and how is the best way for people to keep up with you online? Uh, CaseyJamesOfficial.com. Amen. Yeah. Thank or you. Or at the uh, Twitter, which is um, at CaseyJames. It's at very, Casey. very, very tough to really remember. Really tough. Sorry, y'all. You can write it down. All right. Thank you so much. Thanks again, man. And we are live with Lauren Elena. 
<laughs> Hello, are you you're not barefoot? I'm I was, not I was barefoot. expecting barefoot and buck well. I can see. I can kick these puppies off if you need me. But do you have when you sing on stage? Can you sing and wear heels? Because I does that make yeah. Um, like I actually mastered it. Wasn't is, my thing at first. Is it hard because like where I do you get sing? to walk without them actually? If you want me to be honest. <laughs> Well, I think when you sing, it's like where it comes from, and it seems like you have to balance yourself. Does that take like forever to figure that out, or is it just uh, natural? Yeah, no, it's not natural. Oh wait, the singing part comes natural. The shoes, it's a learned technique. And some of us are not as good at it as others. And to do a concert for how like an hour and a half, what two, ten to fifteen songs in a concert? Yeah, I mean it's it's your feet hurt really bad by the end of the show. I oh, know. Oh, and congratulations, you just graduated from I did. I graduated high school. high school. You blow me away. I swear, I mean, just like the fact that you just stayed, you know, in school and finished that. And I know it was not easy. Crazy. Um, because I'm like most people my age, I didn't go to school. I did it on the road. And I didn't really have a teacher. I did it on this online program. It was so hard. And I'm so glad I'm done with it because it was... Definitely, definitely a challenge. Well, congratulations. Thanks. Okay, so Tony Thomas. Hey there, Lauren. Has there been a fan experience that you've had as, a, as you being the fan that's shaped how you deal with fans of yours, uh, either to the good or the bad? Did you ever, you know, have a chance to meet someone who you admired and it went great or it didn't go well and that's, that's colored how you deal with fans? Yeah, actually, I met Carrie Underwood um, right before the finale, my finale on American Idol, and I freaked out. Like, it was really embarrassing. I'm still kind of embarrassed to this day, and it was two years ago. Um, I cried. I was so excited. I was, <laughs> I was, like, so excited, and then I saw her and bawled. Like, it was like, I can't go meet her. I don't, does my makeup look good? And I was like running everywhere I was like this is so embarrassing and she was so sweet to me and so kind and she was like oh it's too early to be crying and just a sweetheart and it was like it just made me feel so good like she just treated me like I don't know to this day she treats me like a little sister so Excellent. it's really it's really touching and has that has that influenced you then when fans come up to you and are very emotional so that you've got that understanding of knowing what it's like being that person it's kind of it Actually, I met a, a girl earlier today, and she was shaking like she couldn't keep herself together. And I was so excited. And she was 16 years old. And I'm only 18, so it's not a huge difference there. But she was very. It's it's a it's a great feeling. You can't if you don't like that when people are excited to meet you, you're a cold person <laughs> because it's the best feeling in the world to have somebody appreciate what you do and be so excited to meet you and think that you're really awesome. You know because. You're just you in your eyes, and then you see like somebody else can think that you're just like this huge, amazing person, and it's it's really sweet. I'm sure when parents meet you and other and kids meet you, and they like have these dreams or they want to go on American Idol, they ask for advice or they what what kind of advice would you give somebody? That's tough because everybody's path is different. You know, I was on American Idol. Some people start out on Broadway and they get discovered. I mean, there's a million different ways. It's just it takes a lot of hard work. And, um, you know, there for you'll fall down 7,000 times and, you know, there might be one time where you, you really hit it the right way and it all works out. So just, uh, I guess, not giving up is the best thing to do because it's hard and you have to be prepared for it. Wise at 18. Okay, I'm going over to so Beth. You are wise. Bethany Priest in uh, Keene, New Hampshire. Hey, so I want to know what songwriter in Nashville you would love to work with. I've actually been writing with a lot of them, uh, preparing for this next album. So, um, I mean, like all of my favorites I've written with pretty much. Uh, I, I can tell you who my favorites are. Is that okay? Is that yeah, cool? go for that. Um, well, I write with Chris Stefano a lot. And I write, I've written with Luke Laird, he's hilarious, and Ashley Gorley, um, and John Knight. I would say those are my top few people. Awesome. Uh, Danielle or Stephanie, jump in. I'll take it. Now, is it just me, or does Lauren remind you of Scarlett from Nashville? Oh, 
Ooh. Just her mannerisms and everything. I just the Southern Belle. The way yeah. the way she's yeah. talking. Just the way she's talking and the way she presents herself. It's just so Scarlet from Nashville. Well, you know but, what? Um, Scarlet's actually an Aussie, so maybe she picked up and studied her. <laughs> Wow. <laughs> There's their inspiration. <laughs> My question is, you just recorded the theme song for the new SeaWorld attraction. How did that go? Oh, it went really good. Um, I actually went to Orlando a couple of weeks ago, and I got to get the ride takes you through the penguin exhibit and like where they live or whatever and I got to actually get in on the ice and play with them and my favorite part was there was this little new baby uh, king penguin I think that's it was a king penguin I'm pretty sure and it's like kind of tall compared to the rest of them and really fluffy and when they're born which I didn't know this when they're born they feel like a teddy bear and then they lose that hair and they get like feathers but he was so they like to cuddle when they're babies and this little baby was like cuddling with me and it was really, really awesome. <laughs> what a cool experience. It was cool. And then um, we did the opening of the ride and you know when it's it's crazy to be on a ride and hear your voice playing while you're riding it. So it's really it was really cool. <laughs> when you hear yourself on the radio, does that still feel do you get like Yeah. Um yeah, it's it's a crazy feeling to be riding in the car and your song come on the radio. And I just put a new song out. It's called Barefoot and Buckwild. I don't know if y'all know that, but um, and I haven't heard it on the radio yet. It just it just got fun, it just went for ads Monday, so okay. it's very new, and I'm I'm excited and waiting for that moment. And Barefoot and Buckwild is also the name of the album, right? I, I the album is still like in the process, okay. so that we don't have the name or anything together yet. I love the visual, like all of the uh, album art that you put together. It looks good. Thanks. It's cool. I like you. Just look so sassy. I mean, well, you know, I just do what the people who are taking the pictures say, and then other people design it for me. So awesome. The only thing I can take credit for is the face. You don't sit at your computer <laughs> at night and make that stuff. <laughs> no, I don't. If I was that, I would be really awesome if I could do all that. <laughs> She's like, I produce my record. I, write I actually songs. mix the tracks. Uh, uh -huh. Play all the instruments. And I go to every radio station. I ask them to play. <laughs> we do. I do. Yeah. Are I you on a radio actually, tour right now? Um, I think we're about to start up on one. I mean, I've been going around it's just I'm, I'm recording and I'm gonna be out doing festivals and radio promo tour so I'll and be pretty busy someone who doesn't know what a radio tour is explain to that if they're watching them. oh basically you just uh, you go around everywhere and you do small shows for radio um, stations and hope that they play your song like three or four <laughs> small shows a day and then the all the fans come and it's like the radio stations and you're like test the song yeah and, and you're it. in a different place every day so. and you're like where am I going next I know. <laughs> like every day for like day like 10 sometimes yeah. 10 20 days in a row yeah. um, any questions if you want to ask Lauren a question uh, use pound Sam chat on Twitter or pound gone country on Google Plus also um, I don't think Danielle has got to ask a question Danielle go yeah oh. let me think what can we ask? What is your dream collaboration? Oh, man. Yeah, I'm not with the easy ones. Um, <laughs> Bruno Mars. You know, I could see that. I could totally see that working. I love him. Awesome. A lot. Is there anybody you have a celebrity crush on? Bruno Mars. <laughs> oh, that's your crush. Andy went around thinking, and you. <laughs> Oh wait! Oh, we just got you. on by oh, yeah. Shane. Yeah, Tell Oh, please, I'm on here. We got oh, interview. Uh, what is that called? Interview bombed. <coughs> but it's interview bombed. Country <laughs> now. Don't let me interrupt. Go ahead. We know we were just like asking questions and random questions, and from here. But I want to hear what would you? Uh, what My would answer you like would be to Bruno know? Bruno Mars too. <laughs> really? <laughs> <laughs> That's crazy. That's a great. He's a great one to pick. I tell you. Oh, and we've been asking everybody. Um, George Strait. I'm sure you're a fan of George Strait. Sixty number one hits. Six, the six years. Can you believe that? I know you're like in line for that too, though. At 18, you've got that could be you one day. But what's what's your favorite George Strait number one? Oh my goodness, there are so many. Um, I really like Check Yes or No. It's one of my favorite George George Strait songs. I just remember listening to it as a little girl. And, I want to be like that. Oh my gosh. I, can well, see I thought it was cool. cool. You're on the same label. You're label mates with George. You participated in a video campaign to help push the single along. I thought that was pretty cool that the artist did that for yeah. him. Yeah, that was that was really cool. And we got to tell our favorite moment or like an encounter that we had with him. And he he actually told me that his family voted for me on American Idol. 
So how many oh, people get to say that? <laughs> that is That's pretty awesome. cool. That was, that was one of the highlights of my career. Oh my gosh, I love that. Uh, so anybody back over here in our Hangout have a question? We have. You know, Lauren, I've, I've got one. You've been, been able to do so many things for someone your age. One of them is when Jessica was talking about radio tours. You've been to pretty much every corner of the United States, which is something someone your age, most people haven't done. How has that travel affected you, seeing so much of this country? Well, you know, before American Idol, I had only been to Daytona Beach, and one time I went to Wisconsin and stayed in my little small town. I mean, I thought, like, going to Chattanooga, Tennessee was a big city. So um, it's definitely opened my eyes as to how different people are in different places because everywhere you go, people are just, it's just, it's crazy that we all are from the same country, but everyone is so different. You know what I mean? I didn't really know that because I never really met people from far away. And it's really great to be able to travel around and see places that otherwise I would have never seen, you know, and all the time, like every day. I love that. I've got one. Um, also label mates with Scotty McCreary. Mm -hmm. You guys had your run together on American Idol, but with busy lives now, how often do you get to stay in touch and, do, you know, do you make a point to, to keep in touch? I mean, we see each other in Nashville and at award shows and stuff, but it's so hard to keep in touch with even you're like my best friend. I never see my best friend hardly ever that I grew up with. So it's definitely hard to keep you know, in touch with anyone, but I mean, I see him quite a bit. I mean, he's, a, we have the same career choice of choice. So, uh, I see him in Nashville when we're both in Nashville, but other than that, I don't really, I don't really get to see him that often. So do you live here in Nashville? Now? I don't, I, I'm moving here, uh, later this year. I do. <laughs> Ooh, well, that's I an think... exclusive. Uh -oh. Oh, we'll have to circle back to that. That's because I think everybody always thinks that artists live in Nashville, but you guys are touring. So you well, I'm a, I'm, I just turned 18, so legally I couldn't really live without my parents until like six months ago. Oh. So. Uh, okay, I'm getting the wrap it up sign. But I'm excited that you're going to be able to. Let me pull this out of your eye right now. Oh, oh. Do you have that little piece oh, there? Oh, just I got it. rip it out. Oh, my gosh. You are so cool. You're badass. Like, it's I think, gone. Like, have you ever gotten a bar fight? It. What other country artist would you want to have behind you? Like, when you turn 21. Miranda Lambert. Me, too. Or you. <laughs> when you turn 21. I'd be like, oh, I want Lauren. Lauren would protect me. <laughs> or Shane Talbot. I would. I'd have your back. I know you would. I could tell. <laughs> I've hung out with you and your family. You guys are awesome. I've taken boxing. Really? Yeah. An exclusive cool there, too. There you we go. got to circle back to that. Maybe go <laughs> film at the boxing class, too. <laughs> or maybe put you in the ring with Shane. Let you. I saw you fight at the softball game last year. I'm not getting involved in that. Uh oh, uh -uh. another exclusive. She can and get you hot when someone gets after her. Oh, I, I mean, oh, the, this one is a firecracker. I what can I say? Can I have an amazing life? I just love watching you. It's just been ever since even watching you on TV to having you sit right here. Um, it's, Thank it's, you. It's awesome, an honor to participate too and get to know you. And I voted for you also. Oh well, thank you. <laughs> but don't tell Scotty. That. I won't. I don't. I won't tell him. Just kidding. I don't. Care. Um, Shane, question. We got to. I, I, I spy yeah. a DJ Silver in the background over there. I know. I love him. I know we all are hanging out at the ACMs. Here, trade places with me, and then you can. What a segue into uh, DJ Silver. How you doing? Well, I'm gonna. Me. I'm gonna hop out. Okay. Right? Yeah, you can. I think this belongs to you. Man, I just showered. DJ Silver. Hi, Jessica. Hello. <laughs> <laughs> I know Danielle's there. She's got on some silver wear. Danielle, where's she at? She's inside the little window, but she she's have... not. She had to go get her son off the bus, but she'll be right back. <laughs> oh, whoops. I, well, I miss you, Danielle. Hope you're here. <laughs> well, we're, well, when she watches this back, we did a shout out for her. So big, huge week for you. Uh, album came out Tuesday. I actually brought you a copy and left it in the truck because I ran here. Oh, no. But I got That's it. okay. Yeah, I'll see you tonight. I, okay, see you tonight. Oh, well, so, no, we're speaking of a big week. So, album release, yes, whatever, Monday to Tuesday. Then, also, we um, party tonight. Yes, ma'am. Oh. Downtown, second, and Broadway at Scene Nashville, Scene Nightclub, across from Joe's Crab Shack. 
I didn't put a cover on it because I want everybody to come. Um, get there early because the guest list, it will blow your mind who's showing up tonight. I'm excited. Yeah, girl. And so last night, CMT walked the red carpet. What was that like? Oh, it was awesome. I got to see tons of friends I haven't seen in a while. My first gig tour ever was with Nelly, and he was right behind me on uh, the red carpet screaming at me. So we photobombed the red carpet for about 30 minutes, and, and then uh, we went backstage, and the lady from Sony was like, I said, where's Jason's dressing room? He goes, you can't go back there. It's off limits. I said, oh, I'm crashing that thing. And I walked in there. She goes, oh, he's doing it. He's doing it. <laughs> and then did you get in trouble? No, no, not at all. I walked no. in, and, and Jason's 23 on iTunes. I was 22. I saw that. Yeah, right. And Jason goes, uh, Chris Parr goes, well, you're one, point, one place on iTunes from unemployment. <laughs> oh, that was, no, but I saw he tweeted, he left a message on your Instagram, and he's like, oh, I see how, that. yeah. Yeah, that's funny. That's, <laughs> that's, that's, that's got to be fun, like between friends yeah, and absolutely. things like that on iTunes. He's and, probably my biggest supporter. Honestly. Oh, yeah, obvious, yeah, great guy. I mean, that guy hired me when nobody would hire me. Um, I'm going to throw and it not over. not much of that has ever changed, the not hiring part. But, but. Three years, though. You guys have kind of grown uh, up together. I think, uh, yeah, pretty much he stuck with me until he's done. I, you know, so, so you hang out with him a lot, right? Yeah. So you know everything about him. You guys become like best friends. Yeah. Boxers are great. I, listen, that's, I don't know about all that, but hey, buddy, what you wearing tonight? <laughs> um, Mr. Tony Thomas. Hey, the way that you combine songs together and mix them together, your version of uh, Carrie Underwood's Two Black Cadillacs with it. Jolene mm -hmm. is like magic. Did you hear that? The way that it turned out, did you hear that initially just in your head, or did you, did it happen as you went to mix them together? We got, we got the uh, Jim Catino sent me a list of songs, and he goes, I would like to see what you could do with these, and they were perfect for each other. And the uh, only thing I did with that is I took out, Carrie had a really deep orchestra on the song, and I took that out and, and, and replaced it with Jolene drums, and, uh, and they just, like they were made for each other. Carrie actually tweeted about the song today. It's amazing. <gasps> Yay. So cool. I mean, there are some of those breaks where it seems like, was this whole thing planned somehow backwards took to today? It literally 15 minutes you know? to do that. Literally wow. took 15 minutes. It's amazing. Did you hear the Dixie Lands of Light, Alabama Nappy Roots? So cool. Yeah. That so was, awesome. That Loved favorite. that. Yeah, you've got just I a really magic touch. Man, you know? That is a good looking shirt. Just leave yep. it right there. Right Way to there. go, Danny. Just leave it right yeah, there. Yeah, I got Famous all blood. your swag on right ah. now. <laughs> yeah, she said, I'm going to germ out today. I love it. I wish you were germing out with us. I know, right? Um, Bethany Priest. Hey, so I want to know from you, what remix do you do that you feel like the crowd loves the most out of all of them? Like, what gets uh, the biggest reaction? Oh, absolutely. I do one live. I do um, Fat Bottom Girls with... Um, nice. Um, I mix Back That Ass Up on top of uh, Pontoon. Brings Perfect. the house down. Um, Stephanie. How did you get hooked up with Jason Aldean to get onto the Night Train tour? I, um, this is my third tour with Jason. I did both of my kind of party tours. He's, since he's been out headlining, I've been with him. I did um, the Wild Horse Saloon four years ago for the Country Music Weekly Fashion Show, and I made a mix of She's Country and Nelly Country Grammar because I was still with Nelly at the time. Uh, Kevin Neal, his agent, walked up asked me if he could have it. I gave it to him, went on, and now Kevin's my agent, and I've been with Jason ever since. Did you hook up Florida Georgia Line with Nelly? Is that how that happened? No, that, man. No, they, no. Just coincidence yeah. that you... And it worked with Nelly and then yeah. the song. And you broke that song. I broke the original album, yeah. Uh, the Cruise. Yeah. Ah. Yeah, they sent us. I saw, I found the copy of the you know, unmastered said Florida Georgia Line on it on in my computer yesterday. Oh, my God. Yeah. Awesome. And you're making history, too. The first ever electronic dance music or EDM country music artist to sign to a major label. Yeah, what an honor. Yeah, absolutely. Crazy. Sony, tell us a little bit about that. Sony and Average Joe's uh, so, partnership. I, I mean, Sony, Sony Nashville has crazy what they've done for me they actually dressed everybody up in black spiky haired wigs for this weekend i can't wait for you to see it the oh whole my promo gosh. staff yeah shut up yeah. really yeah. i mean those uh, guys from bob uh, you know sarah Jen jennifer you know scott brad they all of them all the way down jim catino and uh and thank you my friends at average joe for help pushing the record and you know ken matson for working this out and believing in me we walked into sony i said this is where i want to be he goes that's a tough order i go feel it man i don't know <laughs> i mean also I also uh, asked to be on LP Field this weekend, and he was just like, why don't you just ask to headline Taylor's tour? So it's, it's, it happened. <laughs> and that was a bucket list. And, um, you know, kids' new management, F3, has just been completely amazing to me. I appreciate y'all. Um, Questions, guys? 
Hey, what's it like when you turn a fan around? I'm sure that when you when when fans just straight up love what you're doing, it's exciting. But what about when you see someone who's not too sure about what you do, and then you turn them around and and they respond big to you? That's that's why I do it. I want to bring new people in the country that wouldn't people that wouldn't give country a chance. I'm a club DJ, and I've always played country, and the two usually don't go together. But if I can bring new fans to country, if they'll give it a chance, they'll love it. It's not all heartbreak and your beer's empty. My beer's always half full, so that's the way I want to push it. I like that. I love too, like when uh, my friends, people ask me, or um, I, I live in a technology world and social media and tech conferences, and like when we wanted to bring you out to Vegas, them when they say what's, oh, country music, ooh, mm. yuck, I'm like just check this out, right. and you take a song like an older song and you mix it with something new, and these people are like that's country. Yeah, that shouldn't fit. Like I do, Eric Church, drink a little drink, smoke a little smoke with um, the uh, Steve Miller band, Joker. Yeah, and they're like, oh my God, they're like, yeah. country is awesome. And I think your style and like, you know, like what a lot of the you and DJ do, mm -hmm. what you're doing is you really are, you're making our tent wider and wider and bringing in more and more new and younger And, and fans. Country, country is party music to me. And I think it's party music to a lot of people. And until pe if, if you can get out of the stereotype of I'm lonely, you know, my girlfriend's ugly, whatever, you know. Truck, truck. My truck, truck. My truck. Yeah. Never mind. <laughs> like, this whole, a lot of songs about trucks and country yeah. music. Um, we're asking everybody. This will be. I would be interested to hear your answer on this. Uh, George Strait, sixty number one song, sixty years. God bless. Old, you. Sixty, sixty. What is your favorite George Strait song? Amarillo by Morning Fireman. Yeah, walking music. Come on now. No, Amarillo by Morning for sure. Interesting. We got some like woohoo. I can't uh, you at least play my shit. I'm just throwing it out there. Yeah, sorry, I didn't do it. it wasn't me. We can't say shit on Tinty. I'm sorry. You can say whatever. My bad. It's the internet. I just got a death look from publicist. Oh, well, no, it's the internet. <laughs> All right. Right? Okay, and so I know we have the railers coming up next, but awesome. I want to talk your new uh, EP, Country Club, available on iTunes. Make sure everybody's buying yeah, it. It's called the Country Club, DJ Silver. Spell it out D E J A Y Silver, under Sony Nashville. And what's the best way for people to stay connected with you or to? DJSilver.com's got all my socials on up there, thanks to you. Uh, oh. Twitter, Facebook, all the stuff I never knew how to run. So I met I, Jessica, so she hooked it up. I know, we got you going. And after we're done here, you're actually going to go back and. Uh, Haley from Google Plus is here, and you're going to chat in our Google Plus community, and she's going to talk to you a little bit more. I love Google, Google Plus. Plus. Isn't it fun? Awesome. People ask me about if my music's on Google Plus. I don't know. It's a Google Play or whatever. Google Play. Well, hey, I don't know. I so become addicted. To I hope it's on Google Play. It is, I think it, it's just uh, it's you've got Apple, Mac, and gotcha. Play Android. Well, I Jessica know, says it's on there, so it's on there. I'm sure it is. I didn't look because I bought it on iTunes. Yeah, girl. That's how I roll. Um, okay, so thank you so much. Anything that you would want to. Uh, Everybody wanted to know, like, before you leave here, what was something you'd want everybody to know about you? Um, I like Star Wars, Long Walks in the Park, and Jessica Nordy. And Yoda. Oh, you and you. Ah, please buy the record, because I don't want to have to get a day job. I know, right? Ah, I don't know, right? Yeah, please, because then, I mean, he'll buy me more things My and give me more compliments. Just be stacking shelves at Walmart. Aww. I love you. I love you more. All right. Thank you so much. Thank you. See
Hey, and we're back. And this uh, group with me is called the Railers, but used to be the something, the junk, the gypsy. <laughs> That's why we changed junk. it to the Railers. <laughs> no, I mean, the, the, no, but no, it was, I, I was somebody, because I talked and I tweeted about y'all, and uh, my buddies at Reckless Kelly were like, oh my God, I love them, and then yeah. gave your old name. Yeah, Tin Cup Gypsy. Tin Cup Gypsy. But Let's try to say it ten times fast. Exactly. How did you guys, ha oh, so the, the Railers, but uh, Tin Cup, like, golfing? No, like the movie yeah, golf. Because no. you're from Arizona. Yeah, yeah, yeah. No, more like, um, you know, just the, the tin cup that you hold out if you're a... Oh, gotcha. Yeah, it's, it's really abstract. That's why we changed it to the <laughs> no, railers. I like the railers. <laughs> it's, but it's a good story, though. But uh, so, great, uh, good time so far here at CMA Fest. Absolutely. Awesome. Everybody's yeah, absolutely. great. We're all... What names? Let me give everybody's names. Okay. I'm Jonathan. I'm Cassandra. Oh, you guys have Is your it, I'm Jordan. And Tyler. And you guys are from Safford, which is like right next to Tucson, which is where I'm from. And you're from yeah. Phoenix, mm -hmm. right? And we're right. desert rat. Where we call them desert rats if you've if you've lived in the sand yep. and the sun for long enough. <laughs> <laughs> well, and you guys, did you? Where did you perform? Like in Arizona, where did you go to perform? Or did you do Cactus Moon and Maverick? We, and we've stuff? been all over the place out there, and we're hopefully getting ready to go back soon. Yeah. Um, but yeah, all over, Chandler all over Center Phoenix. For the arts. Chandler Center for the Arts. We've played up in Flagstaff and Bisbee mm -hmm. and all over the place and funky little cafes and big uh, performance art centers. So we, we play anywhere until they kick us out pretty much. <laughs> and how long have you guys been together as a band? We've been together for three years now. Yeah. yeah. And you're so. Sort of signed now with Warner, right? We just yeah. got signed to Warner in October. Congratulations. Yeah. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Awesome. Thank you. Very excited. Um, I'm going to let these guys. I'm. T uh, Bethany, Tony, Stephanie, whoever, drop in and ask questions. I'll go. Um, okay, so what role do you each have in the band? Like, who's the messiest? Who's the prankster? You know, who's the taskmaster? Cassandra's the messiest. Yes. No, I am not. <laughs> I am so not. I'm the neatest in the hotel room and the messiest in the tour bus, so we kind of even out. Tyler over here is our guru. We call him Buddha because he keeps everything in check and all the um, T's crossed and I's dotted and all that jazz. Jordan's our fun-loving guy. He's our little ball of sunshine. Yeah. And we kind of feed off of each other and joke around a lot and keep it young. And then Jonathan's our foundation. He keeps all of us uh, together, and he's kind of our glue. Is that fair? Yeah. yeah. Okay. Yeah. It's always interesting to hear the dynamics of a band. Sure. Um, go ahead. Uh, Tony? Hey, from up in Seattle, we've got uh, some hey, very Tony. specific coffee connoisseurs in the Northwest. Uh, people yes, can sir. get very specific. Uh, do you guys just like a good cup of coffee, or does, do, do you have to find a particular kind? Or who's the pickiest? Well, okay, so Jonathan. yeah, I, I'm totally the pickiest, and I'm I probably belong in Seattle with my taste, but um, yeah, I just got a Hario pour over system. Okay, I, I won't go there. Um, but no, it's like on the road. It's usually like Starbucks is sort of like the bare minimum, and we usually try to find someplace local. So we utilize the Yelp app a lot to try and find someplace like that's going to be really good coffee or good food. Um, but Starbucks is sort of like the you know, the least amount that we'll go for. You know what I mean? Yeah. I like that coffee exchange in Tucson. Do you guys have a mountain suffered? No. no. Coffee exchange. It's the. It's only in our area. Like you can't. It, and I'm like, oh, that would be an awesome chain. But you'd yeah. love it if you yeah. like Starbucks. He. Oh my gosh. So check this out. One more coffee fact, because we really are obsessed with coffee on the road. Um, so we were opening, we had the honor of opening for Sarah Evans a couple years ago, and we thought it would be a great idea to rig our van up with um, power and bring our own bean grinders and <laughs> medi or what are they called? The little hot pots that boil water, and we were sitting out in Kissimmee, Florida. Is that how you say it? Yeah. yeah. And trying to get electricity to grind our own beans and have fresh coffee, it was it was quite it, an experience. Coffee, coffee <laughs> is about as it is important as a hotel room to us. Really. Wow, you guys are pretty. You're pretty intense on that. I'm getting. Yeah, yeah, you yeah. gotta know, right? you gotta spend some coffee time in Seattle sometime. Amen. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I smell a coffee endorsement coming in. Indeed, <laughs> me too. Let's get on that. <laughs> um, Stephanie, if you guys could have a one superpower, what would it be and why? Oh goodness! Ooh, I know oh Jordan's. Uh, <laughs> I don't know mine because you talk about it every day. I do. Jordan well, would like to be able to teleport. 
Oh yeah. So that we don't. <laughs> so teleportation is way easier. When you spend a lot of time in a van, you you quickly uh, try to figure out how to invent teleportation. <laughs> Yeah, I'm going. I'm going with that too. I hate spending time traveling, so I'm going with teleport. I want to fly. I want to fly. That sounds more fun than just boom, beam me up, Scotty. I want to be able to soar over the Alps and fly like a little bird. That'd That's what I think. Oh, I would so do. you said his. What's yours? Uh, I mean, I would love to be able to teleport, but I'd also like to be able to breathe underwater. Because I'm a total water Aquaman. guy. Aquaman. So, um, <laughs> that was that's that question that everyone always asks, but I hadn't heard it in a long time, and that's yeah. awesome answer. <laughs> Dig it. Uh, we're, and we've been asking everybody. I'm sure 60 number one hits in 60 years. George Strait. What's your mm. favorite of his number one? Oh, oh gosh. Oh, my goodness. That's, I know, right? That's so many. And why? Oh my gosh, because he's amazing. I love. Uh, I love all my exes live in Texas. Yeah. yeah. I think that's a that's great, great song. That is a good one. Oh my gosh, that's that's like oh my gosh. I really Asking made my you favorite think. food. Yeah. Okay, so I was actually here at the Ryman during the Country Radio Week, um, and I had I don't know how I pulled it off, but somehow I managed to be standing like right at the stage filming him when he came on to the Ryman stage and played as kind of like a surprise guest and I almost had a heart attack like I filmed the whole thing like a total nerd he probably thought I was a stalker but I just was enamored with him and kind of grew up listening to all his stuff so and his yeah, uh <laughs> oh my gosh I have a song hook that no you can't write you can't steal it but I have this song hook. And this might sound creepy, but it's actually supposed to be cute. But it's like if George Strait was my dad, because like he seems like such a good guy, and he he is a father and a great one. So I've read, um, and he's he's just an incredible legend in country music. Mm -hmm. oh, you guys, I just got that we got to wrap it up. Oh, but busted. Okay. We're busted. <laughs> I'll just second Jonathan's answer. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> well, make it easy. how do the people keep up with you right now? Online on your yeah. website. I went on. It's just it's a page splash right now. Page. Yeah, it's like a splash right. page. We're working on. Yeah, we're trying to okay. develop the full thing. Uh, Facebook is easy. Uh, it's just facebook.com slash the railers. Okay. Twitter.com slash the railers. The railers dot com. And then um, you're gonna go in there and do some Google Plus after we're done here. Sure. Yeah. Yeah. You're gonna yeah, Google yeah, Plus yeah. it up oh, in the community. Yeah. Yeah. And um, in, when watching for what, what do you have coming out? What's the single? We don't have a single you date yet. Single we're we're record. working on our record right now. Records. We're recording yeah. the record right now. Way to go, Warner. Yeah. So, yeah. Well, thank you so much for wrapping up this date. It's been a crazy day. I've been, I feel so blessed that I got to meet you and even cooler that we're neighbors. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. Thank you all thank so you much, guys. too, for being part of this, making history here at the Ryman Auditorium with, uh, gosh, what do we, we had over 15, I think, different, or 12 different guests today, um, all different types of flavors of country music. Great week, CMA week. Keep following uh, Country Now and YouTube.com forward slash Country Now TV. Subscribe to this channel. Subscribe, subscribe, subscribe. And then we'll be back tomorrow with more crazy Yay. insanity fun, like my living room at the Ryman Auditorium. Thank you so much. Thank you. Thank you, guys.